What is up, everybody? Okay, I have no idea what we're- That is so loud! Uh, I have no idea what we're doing today. <clears throat> Just, uh, rolling with it. So, hopefully, tomorrow will be- I, I think tomorrow is the summer event for JP. And, uh, we'll hopefully figure out how many coins we're getting and all those other things that we've been wanting to know for like a month and a half now. Uh, I'm hoping we get a Blackbeard animation update, because he it seems to be pirate themed and he's already confirmed to be a bonus servant. And uh, it would make sense. So the, the dream is uh, Blackbeard gets an animation update and Black Bart gets a, a buff, because that would be swell. I'm gonna be busy for the next two days. Well, the event will probably last a while, so. Okay, right, I haven't done all the... I haven't gotten all the apples yet, which is a crime. We got the Blood Axe Challenge quest. Which I don't remember at all, really. I just remember that you get debuffed a lot because of Blood Axe's wife, and then I did it with, like, Coup, Proto Coup, and a bunch of budget, like, taunts, supports, and stuff. I kind of want to see, because I know I'm- I remember vividly that Coup and Proto Coup made that fight very easy, and I, I mean very easy. Um, I, I kind of want to see how, like, if I don't use either of them, I just use Scaff and see if she can do as well. Because, generally, you'd, you'd say the five star is the one that would have an easier time, but, uh, because of all the debuffs and stuff, I actually would not be surprised if, uh, Coup and Proto Coup are, are more useful, but, uh, we will see. One two-star costumes? I mean, you've got the, the Paul Bunyan one, but, uh, that's about it. Hey, Ethan, thank you for the eight months. Ethan Allen, thank you. No, that, that, I, I sounded so, like, dead there. Wouldn't show up when I resub a few days ago. I, I have- I don't even know what to say about Twitch subs. Alright, let's do, uh, let's Blood Axe one here, just for fun. Oh, fuck, I have to summon something, though! God, can I just- ugh. Can someone slot, like, horns or something? Like, oh my god, this fucking game. Yeah, I wonder- I wonder if anyone slots any, uh, normal supports <laughs> Look at this! Look at- look at this! Look at Scatty, Scatty, Waver, Scatty, 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 and the one- the one Gilgamesh isn't Scatty. And then see, and you give it a little bit of time, though, on JP, then it's- it's nothing but, uh, it, it's nothing but Castor or Toria instead. God, I, I gotta summon something. You know what? Looking at it right here, I- I bet you Reigns is going to be insanely good for Achilles. And the reason is because you could use a Berserker and have them not just get instantly deleted. Like, she's good anyway, as a support, and then I, I really think if you use, like, a, a big bad Berserker as your DPS for Hercules, Hercules, Achilles, uh, imagine getting those two confused. Anyway, uh, and they're not taking the, the, the double damage, I think that'd make it a lot easier. So I could see that working very well. Probably already been done, but, uh... Okay, well, what are we gonna summon? Maybe someone slotted a, a reasonable Lancer DPS? This is why I need an ult account on NA. Dear God. You know, I, I wasn't thinking about using Tristan at all, but it, it that would be kind of cool, to be honest. Uh, I, I always talk about how good Tristan is. Now, if this was the JP version, if this was the JP version of Tristan, he would be really good here. Because I don't even remember what the debuffs are in this fight. I just remember for a fact that there's a bunch of debuffs here. And the JP version of Tristan now removes all debuffs for the entire team. So that'd be really strong. Uh, so we have Hans if we need him. But I, I kind of want to use Tristan here and just see if it works. Uh, I'm kind of worried though if I use Tristan, um, we might have a debuff problem. Okay, hold up, hold up. Let, uh, cause I don't, I don't really need to be budget, I've already done budget yeah. stuff here, so I don't, I don't give a shit, but, um, let me get the good doctor here ready, and see how he does here. Maybe that'll make up for our lack of debuff clear. This fight, though, is so easy with Ku. I, I remember, because I, I think Blood Axe only gets two actions per turn, and then, you know, PFA, the way it lingers, that's just, you know... OP as fuck, and then you get the debuff clear and everything. And I, I, I want to say there might be an evade thing in this fight, but I'm not sure. 
Am I crazy? I do kind of feel like there might be an evade thing at the end, but I guess we'll see. Um, let me level him a little bit here. I really do hope, though, the JP event is good. Wait a minute. There we go. Haven't really farmed today. Not that big of a deal. As long as Chin Gong and his Flippius are ready to go, I don't need much else on this account. You know, I'm always doing account reviews. I should review my own account and, uh,. And like, see, how, am I ready for Demeter? Am I ready for Fluffy? That kind of thing. I know I am if I like cheese things, like if I use the strongest things I have available to me. But uh, with the way I play, I don't normally do that. So I wonder how uh, prepared or not prepared I am here. Oh wait, I'm not 70. Hold on. I'm actually using silver embers. What a life. Okay. Escalipius is ready. Can green pass the David test? I would fucking hope so. Let me just, I, I don't know my NA account very well though. I feel so like foreign when I play my NA, NA account because I used to play it kind of actively when the game first came out on NA, but like I go for such massive amounts of time where I don't play it uh, that I, I don't really have what I've got over here memorized at all. All right, let's see, where is, yeah, okay, I passed the David test, which I, I mean, I, I'm not surprised with that. I'd be uh, embarrassed if I didn't. Uh, I might level this soon though, might as well go for 10, 10, 10. Let's see, what, what are my skill ranks over here? What do we got here? So the usual suspects are obviously max. Oh, I got the mini grail proto coup, that's nice. Uh, yeah, we got, we got a decent, honestly, for, for how little I play this account, I think my skill ranks are actually pretty decent. Like. Holy crap, do I not play this account, but I think you are, I'm in decent shape over here. Doing all right, got the, the backbone units up there. there. There's a few things that could be worked on, like I wouldn't mind getting that up so the cooldown is shorter, because it actually makes that skill quite nice, but uh, yeah, it's not too bad. Jolter not max skills, you know, one of these days, you know, I, I, I don't mind Jolter, right? So one of these days I would get her skills up on one of my accounts, it's just she doesn't have an animation update, and she looks like ass. And then I, because I don't like hyper, I'm like, eh, you know, it's like, I can do it later. Hey, Arjuna, that's an emote right there. Okay. The fuck is that team, by the way? So, no coup, right? We're banning coup for now because coup makes this quite easy and I've already done it with coup. So we're going to see how Scath does in comparison. Although I, I, I this is kind of awkward using Tristan, but we'll, we'll see what we do here. All right, what do I want to use? So Blood Axe is AOE. I know there are debuffs here. And then Scath has no anti-debuff because she is a scrub like that. I bet you Pins could be pretty good here with the debuff immunity and everything. Even though Berserker on Berserker Violence is normally not that ideal, but uh... Uh, okay, I, I know taunts are pretty good here because he does like massive damage. Mash could be good. Asclepius obviously is good. Do I start with Asclepius? I feel like I don't start with him. I think I put him there. Why can't there? Oh my god, chat, you don't understand, right? It's like if I was using a uh, hundred face. You know, I'm like, okay, I could use maybe Mozart, I can use, uh, Hohenheim, right, you can go through, like, the butt- When you use Quick, you- you don't have anything, right? If you're- if you're thinking budget and support, and then it's Quick, it's like, oh, well, you got pawns. Your coup missed three crits, and MHX lived on 1,400 health. Hey, that doesn't, uh, th that's not my fault. That sounds like user error there. <laughs> Dumas win. Now, it would be kind of fitting if they made Dumas a quick support because of the whole Edmund thing, but I would prefer Ed uh, Dumas be, like, very NP-focused, because that's what he is lore-wise. Although, I was going to say, you know, you could make him very battery, because battery is, is, um, in NP, right? So give him lots of battery charge and, like, NP damage up. But what you could do is you make him more quick oriented. You could still give him some degree of battery, but it's not really his shtick, right? You make him NP and quick. You know, NP damage up and quick up, stuff like that. And then you make uh, Maxwell's demon. You make Maxwell's demon 
a, a one to two star or even a three star if you want to battery support like very heavy battery but like you know 50 percent. i think 50 percent battery on a low star is fine but then he doesn't offer nearly as much damage or other abilities like waver does or or scatty and reigns and that kind of thing i think that's totally balanced i don't i mean, maybe you make it 40 percent if you want to be a dick but i think 50 is fine if you're reasonable about it maxwell would be a limited three star i could see him being added if they added a bunch of bronzes again like when they added chin gong and charlotte and everything if he was included in a, in a chunk like that i wouldn't shock me at all like I, I would not shock me but he could be added at any time really for any reason they have all kinds of ways they could go about that maybe a red line collab that would be nice because he's pretty important in red line okay what am i doing here this makes so much sense but we're not doing it gotta make it harder on ourselves hmm bc bronze good here david could be good here i wish i remembered what this boss did but uh i just remember debuffs and that is it Oh, chat! He's got uh, debuff clear, guys! And Blood Axe, I think, is evil. I'm actually not sure about that. Let me check. Uh, so, clearly, Sanson's a good pick here. Like, why uh, why, why wouldn't he be, chat? What, uh, what, what could be the problem? Alright, let's see. Blood Axe is chaotic neutral! Oh, god. Feels bad. And let's be real, Sanson wouldn't have been good here anyway, but, uh... Could start with Mash, could start with David... I might try David, that doesn't seem terrible. David's here for living then, though, not damage. Where is the Kanith album? Chat, I was doing like those farming stages earlier. I, I, I logged in a bit ago. And, um. The top, the first stage I did, the top of my list, first support, had the CE that I wanted, limit broken, but it but it was Canis CD, like the user. Just, just bam, right there, right in my face. It was just. You know, it, it, and there was like a rare, you know, craft essence a lot of people don't have and stuff, like for the farming and everything. I was just like, really? Like, what, what a thing to open the game up to. Okay, so Scaff's problem here is NP gain. I almost want to start with Hans then. I mean, Hans should be somewhere. Hmm, maybe we do... This is tough. I want to work in a lot of things on this team. VC Bronze not bad here either. Hmm, this is a good song by the way. I don't have this MLB yet. That's unfortunate. All right, let's see what happens. I bet you you could do Tristan as the main DPS with David. I bet you that would work just fine. Is Leonidas or Eric harder? Depends on what you have. Overall, I would agree it depends on what you have, but I would say Leonidas is harder. Now, I do not remember this fight very well. I'm, I, I'm, that's kind of a bullshit answer because I just, I don't even remember what the debuffs are here. But off memory, I, 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 I just remember when I did this back in the day, it was really fucking easy and it took like no effort and I didn't min max the team in the slightest. Uh, now some of that is because Ku was just such a big counter to it, but still, um, I suspect overall Leonidas is harder, but we'll see. Maybe I'm gonna be surprised here.
Okay. Fence up. Increase charge by one for when defeats an enemy. Okay. The one thing I do remember quite vividly, though, is just his normal attack damage is nutty. I probably should have cast Guts, actually. I think he gets a bunch of attack buffs throughout the fight or something. Well, Armor Ignore would be good here. Well, I already see debuffs. I feel like the anti-dot command code would be really good here because that lasts five fucking turns and I don't have a lot of healing. I already don't like Scath here though in comparison to Ku. I'm not trying to hit on Scath or anything, but I just don't see that... I think Ku is just better than her. Like, I, I doubt her like bigger nuke is going to be really relevant here and then Ku just having anti-debuff and more survivability I think is just better. Because I think both of them can meet the damage threshold. And then just the tanky anti debuff stuff is just better. Like her NP gain is just so bad. Oh, she has one anti curse, that's something. Right, I think every, like, oh fuck, he's in the wrong stage. God damn it. I mean, not that this stage looks bad, but now he doesn't match his cards and everything. Let's see. It's not really a good turn to remove debuffs, but I kind of want the battery to be safe. Actually not crazy about Asclepius this early on. Yeah, you want your NP right now. She's gonna get the defense up again after this. Close. Hmm. Probably break here. Just don't kill David. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Sclipius. Don't kill Sclipius here. I wanna use his MP next turn. That pop's actually removable. Hey, Radgas, what's up? 40 months though. Thanks, dude. <clears throat> I still have a little bit of time. He does have evade. Surprised I remembered that. Hmm. I have no NP gain for Scath. Can't say I care for that. Uh, just hit Scath one time, forehead. Please no crit. Oh my god, Asclepius' is voice actor. Damn it. Man, Scaths in P gain is, uh. something to behold. Not, uh, not impressing me is what I'm getting at here. It's really fortunate because he doesn't have uh, any buffs here. Probably should have done Buster last because she's going to get her NP from being attacked. Yeah, she gets her battery later. That helps. That was a good buff for her because it just made her more consistent. It didn't make her peak value really different.
such voice acting chat. Well, there goes the Slippius. Bonds would have been okay in, in that slot. <laughs> oh man, they really need to give uh, Blood Axe an animation update. I think he's pretty cool. Alright, um, can I break without using the second skill? We've got attack down. I can remove it. It'll be close. If we don't use the second skill. I brought, you know what? We should use it though, because I brought Atlas. <laughs> David's getting a lot of value out of his uh, evade. That's the original evade he cast on turn one. <laughs> So far, this is a joke battle, but I, 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 I something nasty happens at the end. Okay, yeah. It's a, it's, a, it's a little bit of health. This is a little bit of health. Okay, and he gets damage resist too. Yeah, the, the real fight's at the end. I think he, that gets applied multiple times throughout the fight. I think it's like the defense up where it has a gap every so often. And I think he hits stupid hard now. Okay, well... We might actually have to Atlas David, but we'll see. I'm trying to think how I want to maximize my defense here. So I can just defense up, that's not the best. I could taunt and then MP with mash and then defense up. That's pretty good. So I don't think I need to use... Although, I could give the battery for mash's second skill to... to Scath because she kind of needs the help. Not exactly the best at uh, NP game, that one. And whenever he doesn't have the resistance, I think you need to absolutely have her NP. Hmm, tricky tricking. This is kind of a risky play, because like doing taunt and then that on herself, and then doing matches NP in her first kill, that's a lot safer. Like, it's a lot, lot safer. But this way it has more, like, peak value if things don't go horribly wrong. Big crits, big crits. Oh yeah, zero damage, very nice. Okay. Need David to live here. I don't know, it might have been better to do the thing with Mash, because having her with her NP right now would be really useful. We have no NP gain for Scath. I can't remember, it's, it's been too long, but I, I know if you charm Blood Axe, something really bad happens because of his wife, but I don't remember what it is. Does anyone in chat remember? I, I, just, I, I know something like fucked up happens if you charm him. It's a bunch of curses. <laughs> can you remove them? Because if you can remove them, then it, it, uh, it's not too bad, but if you can't, you're probably just dead. That's pretty funny. Uh, I really do like the flavor in this uh, challenge quest. It's not that hard in comparison to the other ones, but it's like so lore accurate. Alright, we really need to get our NP already. Kind of a problem. Alright, we could have David evade now. And then use, do that to stabilize for one more turn and then use Scaff's evade. That's probably fine. The thing is, I don't want David to die right now because I don't want the deck to reset because I have a decent chance of getting an art chain soon. Fuck, I think this is the turn you're supposed to do damage and I'm not gonna be ready. Scath, your game is so bad! God damn it.
Yep. Uh, now I have to live. So oh, that's bad. I think we're gonna lose, dude. I uh, I'm not impressed with Scath on a budget team so far. I could change the team though. Like Hans, Hans should be on the team. That's definitely a thing. If I want to, I can save David. Because again, if I save David, I'm almost positive I have an art chain next turn. The thing is, I have to wait so long. I don't. I don't care if I have an art uh, art chain next turn. So I think I let David die. Cause yeah, it's we're gonna get our. I have to wait so long now. It, we'll get our MP in time if we let you know one way or the other. So. I think we're gonna lose though because I actually think we need to MP twice to win, and uh, the Scath's MP gain is just too shitty. You can still compensate for the Onic budget team though by bringing things like pawns and, and other battery stuff. So uh, the the value <laughs> right there. That's so funny. Like all those attack buffs and it's just uh nah bra. Oh he still doesn't have the damage resistance. Fuck. Well, we're <sighs> fuck. We have we're so not ready though. I wonder if I, I, I'm sure it comes back. There's no way it stays down forever. Watch Tristan just die. Oh wow, actually his damage is pretty sad right now. Oh, no, there it is. Okay, it's back. Feels bad. Hmm. Do we sack Mash? Probably not yet. If I could get her first skill off. Technically, I could do Tristan's first skill now because we still have Guts and Vulnerability and then the Evade comes back. And then also this can come back. So... It's kind of iffy as it is, I think this is right. Okay, well, we are ready to go now if we ever get the shield down again. Oof. Brutal. Who is just so much better, man? Because if he gets debuffed on like the big NP turn, he can just remove it, right? Just like that. Okay, Tristan still doesn't have his NP. Got it after this turn though. Alright, now as long as we live until the shields are down, we might have enough damage. Okay, he doesn't have it. This is where having a damage mystic code would be nice. My god. Scats and P gain in this context though. I mean to be fair, we didn't bring any supports to like offset that, but still that was rough. See how Tristan does here. Got an attack down. That's still not bad. Okay, let's see. Tristan has evade. I think here you just let Mash die. Okay. Hi. Oh, 
Yeah, no animation update on JP. Feels bad. Okay, he's damageable. You know, I tell you what though, this is uh, buying us some time there. Crit down and removing the attack ups. That ain't bad. Probably don't evade on Scath then. Tristan has the attack down, but he's got a brave chain. I don't know, we might lose. We'll see. Down to the wire here. Shame that he's got the damage resist right now. We could do really big crit damage otherwise. Oh, that's another thing that hurts Scath is she gets the MP down, the MP gain down. Ugh. This one's gonna die to the uh, dot. Uh-oh. Well, we got a few turns left on Scath because of the Mystic Code, but uh, it's not looking great. Don't pop guts this turn, please. Woo, boy. I don't think the dot will kill us here, so basically we need to get our NP and then just hope for the best. Any day now, game, we want to get rid of that shield. God, he has guts to... Oh fuck, it's on- okay, I can get rid of it though. <laughs> it's on one turn cooldown. Uh, but I can get rid of one stack. Work with me here, game. Got this groovy music, though. Dude, what is this NP gain right now? I don't know if we can kill him, even if he doesn't have his shield, because, uh, he's got guts. And if I don't stun him, we're like dead. Oh, did his guts wear off? I'm not sure. Oh, thank God it did. He doesn't have the shield. I don't have my NP though. And uh, you know what sucks is if I had my NP, we would stun him and then my evade would come back. Well. RNG, let's go. It's kind of up to the crits. Oh God, I have attack down. I think we're dead. 30, 40, 50. See, if we were coup, we'd remove all of those fucking debuffs. Oh, oh, nope. We deserve this, dude. I'm telling you, coup is so much better than Scath here. It's not even close. Like, Scath might be better if you were working with, like, Scatty and Waver and stuff like that. But if you're not, I think coup is so much better. Like, that, the, the, the lack of, uh,. Debuff clear on her is so noticeable. Oh, is debuff removal back? Feels bad. I don't know if that would have made up though, because we only had one attack down. I don't. I don't think one attack down would have made up for like 30k, unless it's larger than I'm thinking. But I don't think it's that big. Dude, that's disappointing though. Scans did really poorly there. Okay, uh, let's see if we can still make Scath work, though. We will try to compensate for her gain issues.
Uh, I don't I don't think that attack down would have made up for that much damage. It doesn't look like that big of an attack down. Hmm. Really, you'd want Tristan to be something else that would give battery. This could this might work. Might cut George. Let's see, he might cut his Philippians too, actually. Okay. Terrible opening hand. Uh, God, Han's no animation update. Oh my God. I can't believe they didn't do the animation update for the CCC rerun. I, I have no idea why they didn't do it there. I'm so sad that you don't get the whale in uh, Genshin. Like, what a disappointment. Man, how did- the deck just could not be shuffled in a more annoying way here. Every single bit of NP gain for Scaff is in the third hand. Look weird, but I want to do this to get ahead of an NP gain and have it come back, maybe. Oh, it might have been better to have Brave change there. Because the damage would actually have been nice. God, I gotta fix this Clipius's stage. Well, I could NP right now, but I don't think that's worth. This is actually going a lot worse than last time just because of deck RNG. What I could do... Nah, I'm just gonna restart. That's super, just way too slow. Uh, I was thinking I could do there as I could NP with... Uh, Scath and then use Atlas on Hans and like use his third skill again, but uh, that was just way too slow. I really wish I could just summon nothing. I, I, I really dislike the support system in this game. Like, it's just so annoying, and like, it's why everyone always will summon those some OP shit like this, right? Because it's just. It's so fucking random otherwise. Probably my least favorite thing in uh, like the core gameplay of FGO because you just have to deal with it all of the time. Like you either have to summon something super weak that's completely pointless and won't help, it just complete waste of space, or you have to summon something OP as fuck that's gonna make it too easy. It's like that should not be your only two options. But that's always how it is, especially as Especially in events like this because like a damage dealer is useless unless they have the event CE and almost no one will slot the event CE on anything that makes any sense yeah, Almost every other game that has a support system. They don't make you use it. It's optional I have no idea why Fco makes you use it Like how we were, we were summoning is just gone. Like I I don't want to summon Scatty game. Like n no thanks. This is stupid. There's just nothing to summon. Like, this is exactly why I have an alt account on on JP though, so I can just summon like George 
Like if I'm gonna use George anyway and you summon George, then you just essentially get, you know, whatever unit you want. This is so fucking stupid. God. I know, people always get mad when you use like a, a strong unit in a, a setup. You know, even, even if it's the only strong unit in the whole setup. And then like all you have access to is bullshit OP stuff on your support list. Like you couldn't summon something weak if you wanted to, right? It's like nonsense. I'm not gonna summon something that doesn't have an event CE though, because it's pointless, because this event is scaled around event CEs. Are, are you not listening to the words that are coming out of my mouth here? Weird that he doesn't have the d defense up already. Shame I can't do any damage. And it seems like it's random what she casts. Which is kind of dumb if it is. Not that- I mean, the challenge quiz isn't hard enough that's that big of a deal, but... Oh my god, I need to keep forgetting to change that. She didn't land the star absorb. Yeah, she didn't. I was about to say, how does she? Or is her crit chance so bad? It's like, how does Asclepius have two fifties and yet she missed the eighty percent? Oh my God, eighty equals zero. Attack up! Attack up! Attack up! There you go. I'm about to just use Q though. It makes this so much fucking easier. Are you fucking kidding me right now? We're taking so long to break. Well, I gotta fix uh, Sclipius and you can't have him die like that. Might be worth it not to bring him at all. Again, that's why Ku is good because Ku doesn't require any uh, babysitting when it comes to the debuffs here. Crazy. I don't remember this one um, being part of the original event. Like, I, I think this one is only in the rerun, which is kind of weird because it doesn't count. Like, it's not technically part of like the second half because like the second half ones are gold and the first half ones are purple. But unless I'm crazy, I don't fucking remember this being in the original. Like, it's only in the rerun, so I don't really get why it's done that way. I guess it's because the they realized that the original final was so bad that they kind of considered this the final of the original, right? I, I guess that's what they're doing. But I, I don't get it. They could have just made it. This should just the, the Nero one should just be the first one of the gold ones, right? Like it, I don't get why they did it that way. It's even like in its placement, that's how it is. So it's just kind of weird. Oh my god, this is so annoying. And see, I would make an ult account on an A, because I like playing through the game anyway. The thing is, if I ever want to play through the game, I, I there's no reason to play on an A. I mean, I'm not trying to insult an A here, but there's if, if I've already read this story and, and blah 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 blah, there's literally no reason to play in A. Right, like why why would I, right? JP is the exact same game, but you have way more servants and more command codes and more story, you know, more boss fights. So it's like there's I there's I've no desire to make an NA ult account because like it's just worse. 
肩の期待はよしてもらおうこれでどうかよく行くぞいいだろう少しばかり誇張して書いてやる Very unimpressed with Scat's performance here, though, I gotta say. To be fair, though, this really is not a good fight for her because it is a very debuff oriented fight and she has no anti debuff. The enemy's not divine. Uh, also, a, a lot, having a, a slow NP gain is, is never a good thing, but in a lot of stages it's not that bad. It's really bad here because you have to do your NP uh, whenever, for the turns that he doesn't have the damage stuff, resist stuff. So it's like it's really not a good fight for her. Although you could make it a good fight for her with like strong supports, but that's because of the supports, not her. And if you have strong supports like that, you could carry basically any DPS here. So, although if you were using like Wave Rinse, Scaff, and all that, her stun spam would make this really, really easy. Wait, why didn't I cast this last time? Only 19 stars. It's not really worth using the evade, I feel like, because I can't even be hit this turn anyway. Man, we're getting nothing done. Might need to change the budget support, so I don't really like how they're working here. I wish someone had a buster card. It doesn't have to be Scath, like just anybody. Yeah, I need to change the supports. This is really not a good team. Yeah, if someone else had a buster card there though, we could have broke. Every time, dude! Every fucking time! That's why I don't like this team, because like that happens all the time, and then it means Asclepius does nothing. Like, he's literally doing nothing, so it's like, what's why is he on the team then? Don't do it. Fucking did it. I think she does that every time though, in that turn. This is so bad. It's gonna, I'm, cause now, if I could uh, NP right now, uh, I would stun him, and then I could do Mash's second skill on Scath and I'd get the 20% battery. But like now, I have to use it on someone to just just to survive the NP. Wasting so much time. Yeah, I know, Kurt. Ku has sh sure hit. Ku is so much better for this fight. It's not even close. You know what Zoss said? It's like, Ku's just really good anyway, but then this fight is his kind of fight. Like, 100%. And then it's like the opposite for Scath, where she does have good value in general anyway, but then this fight is, like, not her kind of fight at all. Oh, yeah, so 
The only good thing about Scanth here is the stun. The stun is nice. It's just not nice enough to make up for all the other bullshit. I'd like to point out, it is kind of weird that Scanth can't remove debuffs because, now, to be fair, it's not like Scanth needs any help gameplay wise. Like, this may not be a great stage for her, but there's, I mean, she's so good overall. Um, but it is weird because she has, you know, primeval runes, and I, I'm pretty sure that, that, that would make sense if they remove debuffs, right? Like, she's got a bunch of them, so. Little odd. Kinda wanna save Hans's art card for a potential art chain. If I could save Nash's NP, I could guarantee an art chain whenever Scath gets hers, but I don't think I can afford that. <laughs> Yeah, she's mad if Eric doesn't murder, basically, and then she's really mad if you charm him, so... Hmm... Ons DPS, let's go. That's the secret to a loving marriage? <laughs> I don't know about that. But just, uh, you know, kill everybody. Are you fucking kidding me? And she's she's a shielder, right? So she's not taking the okay. Get a crit and a kill in the same turn. Well, that's a problem. Cuz literally no one's ready to do any damage. This sucks. Like, this is super shit. I, I can make a better budget, though, team around Scath. Like, that's part of the problem. The team isn't really that good. Fuck, the problem is he could kill Tristan right now. Uh, just don't do that, forehead. No one has their NP though, God. Uh, I, I just this scat is just way too slow. Really, man, this this is wait. I don't know why, but this this is so much worse than before. Like it's not even close. Wow, like, uh, not even close on that one. Like, I wasn't even remotely close. He just never really could do any damage. 
I, I, I'm seriously about to just use Koo, but the thing is, I've already beaten it that way, so it's not very interesting. But Scath fucking sucks here. Also, just really hard to summon Tristan. Honestly, like, Tristan doesn't do anything. I might just, uh... Actually, I can't- I was gonna say, you can't use double George. Uh, but I was supposed to put George at the end would be better. I need someone to die, but you can't do that. Well, what I could do... I need to change the team a lot. Like, George needs to not die. Like, someone needs to not die until you actually have Scaths in P. that yeah our units die at like the worst timing possible the thing is that's that's the fault of scath though because she she's so strict on when she can get things done because her gain is so bad <sighs> I like how he just instantly double busters and crits and it's on a turn that I can't do anything it's like so it doesn't matter right like I, I can't do any damage this turn Yeah, Plot Monk's okay here, but she's not, like... Casters aren't really good for killing Berserkers because of the way the damage mod works. But she's got Battery and she's got Anti-Debuff, so, I mean, it's okay. Mash is gonna go down pretty soon here. And Scath is absolutely not ready. I'm really disappointed that Scat's doing this badly here in comparison to Ku. Because, like, normally when I compare Scat to Ku, she's, like, I've done that a lot on NA. She normally does pretty well, but... This fucking sucks. Like, she does terrible here. And, like, all the ways that you can make her do better are just going to be the supports carrying, which isn't, like, her own stuff. But it's just, this is a really bad fight for her. It's, it's mainly because of, of, um... This. She just cannot handle that. Like, her own NP gain is so bad that that just fucking kills her. I feel like though there's a way that I can still make this better. Of course you didn't crit there. Oh, I think the music's looping.
That timing was very bad. Uh, it's just every time, like every time the shield is down, my hand is like this. Like every fucking time. Oh my god. If I could have broken there, it wouldn't have been so bad. So what happens now is our, our, like we're already we're already twenty we're wasting already twenty one NP right that that's a lot and I'm not using Hans's third skill and now we're gonna whip even more because I can't NP right now. Oh, I think when he NPs, he doesn't get the shield. That's actually a really reliable way to sync up your damage. That's actually probably the better t way to look at it, and the other stuff is a bonus. The thing is that you would want to then have NP'd uh, after he NP'd on that first one. But I never realized that until now. I feel like I knew that back in the day. I'll have to watch my video, but uh, I certainly didn't remember that. No reason to taunt because... NP... Hmm. Do that number. Hey, lonely boy, what's up? Thank you for the 21 months. I subbed two days ago? Yeah, well... You know, free notification, why not? You might be better off just doing a bunch of taunt walls all with NP charge on death. Like that, that might actually work better. Gonna save Hans' NP for now. Try to get an art chain with Scath. crap load of stars, so that's good. The bad news is we're probably- well, he might kill the Unitas here, actually. But I won't have my NP. Evade would be nice right now just to get the crit up, but it's not worth it. Also, we have the attack down. I never use Atlas, that's probably a mistake. That really didn't do much damage. Now, if he NPs, he won't get the shield, and he doesn't have the shield now, but I don't have... <sighs> okay, let me think. The, I would like to use Asclepius's third skill next turn, but it's really awkward for Asclepius to be alive next turn. I could do the NP seal. No, I should just NP and stun him. Do I do Atlas now then to get the quick up? This is so fucking awkward. I would hate to use Asclepius' third skill here, but uh, I think I, I, it's worth. God, that sucks though. And I'm using Atlas and I'm only gonna hit one skill here. 
I really question if this is worth it. I don't I don't know about that. Hmm. I, I don't know. I don't know about that. That's, uh... Would have been better, I think, to have used the evade for the, the NP coming up and then done the Atlas. Man, if I could have done Asclepius' third skill now, man. You have to 44% and then you get Hans's thing, right? And you could not, you could even maybe stall until he does his NP. Okay, so here's the dream Asclepius doesn't die here. That That is, that is absolutely the dream right now. And then he dies next turn. That seems so unlikely. Also, I feel like Scanth could just die right now. Hmm. Music's taunting me, I swear. Just for the love of God, don't kill Asclepius. Like, just don't do that. Like, buffer something. Defense up, defense up, defense. Oh my god. Well, I wanted the attack up too, but at least we got the defense up. Woo! 10,000! There's that debuff resistance. If only I could get her fucking NP right now, it, it would be great, but I can't. Oh my god. I could quick chain and try to crit next turn. It's like... Oh my god. I could win if I just had more NP gain. Try liking the music though. Uh, if he kills Hans here, actually, I think we, we pretty much win. Oh my god, we win! I'm so unimpressed with Scaff here! It's just awful! Oh my god, the restructuring the team though definitely helped because uh, we didn't really get lucky there and it was still better Like the, you, uh, the death lineup was much better that time because this time we actually have a lot of value because I would stun here So then you get another turn uh, Then I could in invulnerability and then guts would go off But then my evade would be back and then I could probably NP again, right? Like there's quite a bit of time left here That was not impressive though. Jesus Christ. That was not impressive. Z the app, not not that again, not that shit again. See now you're gonna fuck me up when I need to actually Z the app. See. Dude, that I, I this, this I don't know why that victory just feels so hollow. I don't know why I that did not that was not a good team. That that was that garbage. It, it was better though, switching out like the extra taunt wall and putting Asclepius in the back was much better, but uh... I mean, it feels garbage because I'm using a 5 star DPS and that feels bad enough already and then she did worse 
than if I use three stars, right? Like that's, eh. Yeah, I need to get a Sklipia spawned. That was so shitty. That, that, was, so, like, that was so shitty. Like, what was that? Anyway, uh, let's, um, I'm so glad this one's over with, by the way. This one was so lame. This was such a lame challenge quest. Like, it's not even hard. It was so simple because the game tells you the kill order, right? You literally just follow whose shields are down and you beat it, right? It's just, the only problem is you might get really unlucky with the evade and then that's it, right? Yeah, so far, that's my least favorite challenge quest of this lot, just because... Because here's the thing, like, MHX is pretty well designed, Ezo is pretty well designed, there's some good boss fights in this. And that one is just, like, dumb. Okay, now we're farming, so I need to bring the, uh... Event one, I guess I'll bring a scatty then. I'll worry about making an actual farming team when I've actually beaten each one of these once. Actually, we'll do that. Uh, what does this account need bond with? Probably Hans. I guess, uh, Asclepius, apparently. Not much else, really. It's always nice to get bond on Chen Gong, because his bond CE is actually good. I like MHX. I think that one's... It's got a lot less RNG than a lot of the other fights out there. And, uh... Yeah, it's got a lot of interesting gimmicks and stuff. I actually really like that one. The only thing I don't like about it, I guess, is you can't really just sit down and, like, intuitively know what to do, right? Like, there's a degree of trial and error no matter what. Let me think, out of this lot, my favorite one is... Leo's up there because Leo's a very fair one, but it's still interesting and fun. Um, so I know my favorite one is Romulus down the road, but he's not out yet on NA. Uh, but Romulus, I think, is the best one because it's kind of like the Leo one, but a bit harder. Ezo's is pretty good. I, I like Ezo's pretty good. Um, I really love the gimmicks in the... Shiba one, it's just, it's too RNG, right? And you can beat it with a pretty reasonable team, but it's just, you know, the, the a hard part of it is the RNG, which is not really fun. <laughs> yeah, I really like the Romulus one, uh, because it rewards, like, thinking ahead two turns and things like that. Oh, fuck. Imagine doing 43k to an enemy with 7k health. Oh, wait a minute. I, uh, should have done it the other way around there. We're not gonna kill. Yeah, probably would have killed the other way around, though. I don't mind the Taiga one. The only issue with the Taiga one is I think the missed the mark on, um, like, the numbers of it, right? I think the numbers on it are a little off. So, like, I think what is demanded of you in terms of, like, what kind of toolkits are rewarded and punished, I think it's completely fine. I think the gimmicks are fine, the concept is fine, because it's pretty unique. Um, the, the issue is just, like, they do a little bit too much damage versus the amount of damage you need to do, and so on and so forth, that, like, from a pure budget standpoint, it's kind of just out of whack. But I, I, I like the Tiger one. Like, I think it's pretty fun. I've done it quite a few times on my various accounts over the years, and I've always enjoyed it. And it, chat, it's, I'm, I think it's the only challenge quest or main story fight in the whole game that Valkyrie's pretty good for. I, you correct me if I'm wrong, but I cannot think of any other challenge quest where Valkyrie was a good option. Now, she's probably not the best option. You know, you've got Pervati and stuff, but she's pretty damn good in that challenge quest, and there's, Really never been another time where that's been the case, which is kind of sad.
Giving Koo the quick up because he's got a quick card. Let's see how much damage Koo can do there. Gorgon's an interesting pick for that fight. Stun's pretty decent. I think Valkyrie does keep up with Parvati though in that challenge quest. Like, Parvati is better, but I, I think Valkyrie still keeps up because of the sure hit and, and just the extra survivability and stuff. But, I mean, anytime Parvati lands Charm, oh my god, it just, it makes it so much easier. Like, it's, it's crazy. Because I, I did it on this account. I did it with Parvati in one try, and then Valkyrie actually had to, like, you know, mess around and twink the team a bit and try to figure out how to get it to work. With Parvati, I, I, I just beat it even though I didn't min-max the team, so... Kind of a bad sign for, uh... Valkyrie there. But I have never seen someone actually say they think this challenge quest was fun. Because it, it's just not. It's very straightforward in what you need to do. And if something goes wrong, it's not because you made a bad plan or because you attacked the wrong one or whatever. It's just because the evade screws you over. And you probably, you, you, not everyone can, you could say, oh, bring sure hit. But not everyone's going to have a good enough unit with sure hit. Because the thing is, you can so easily beat it without sure hit, right? That it's just, it's kind of fucked up. Also, Ku is godly for this one as well. Ku is seriously good for this one. You, you, what you do is, your opening team uh, is just Ku as the DPS. And then you, your first replacement is a Berserker. Like maybe you summon a friend's Ku Alter or Gajuna or whatever, right? And so you have Ku take care of the first health bar on Napoleon, which is incredibly easy. You can do that in like half a second. And he's still pretty, can take out Fionn's health bar quite quickly. And then when the Berserker shows up, they can take out the Saber one. And then uh, when the three break bars are done, you have to kill Napoleon again. And Ku's going to have his NP by then. And you just boom, you NP it. Now Napoleon's dead, right? And then your Berserker can probably NP and kill Fionn. And then you just deal with just, uh, or, or, uh, with, I was going to say Artoria, excuse me, uh, Nero. And that, that's basically what I did on, uh, on this account and it worked really well. I did it. I did it both ways. I did one set up with Scath and one set up with Ku, and and unlike with like Blood Axe there, that Scath was just, I just didn't care for that. I I really did not care for that. I need to do it more though because like my team was the problem, for the most part. But still, I that was fucked up. But uh, I did Scath and Ku as the Lancer DPS and the Nero one, and Scath kept up much better on that one because like the stun was really nice and um, like the you don't really need the debuff clear and stuff like that. The, the coup was still better though, but that's because the enemy didn't have enough health, right? Each health bar of the enemies in that stage is small enough that um, Scaff's extra damage does, isn't really relevant. And so coup having more survivability is just better. Also, sure hit is, is good again because of the evade thing. Scaff doesn't have uh, the evade thing. I tell you, man, coup's really fucking good, right? Really handy uh, unit. All right, let's get this one over with. But yeah, for anyone struggling with that 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 Nero one, I really, the way to do it, in my opinion, is use a Lancer DPS like Ku in the front. Uh, it, you can do other classes, uh, especially if you're like Ku Ultra or something. But I think I think Lancer in the front is good. And then your first replacement, you know, the fourth slot is a Berserker, like a friend Berserker you can summon or something like that. And then everything else on the team is either taunts or support, you know, stuff like that. And I think that works really well and it makes it pretty easy. Oh, there's a ruler here. I'll do it one time with just whatever, but then we'll try to make an actual team for farming it. See what the... What we do. Man, my uh, NA account doesn't have a whole lot of AOE, I see. Let's do... Okay, let's not summon uh, a Helena. Like, let's, uh, let's not do that. Let me scuff the... 
waivers. Not that it really matters for farming, but uh... Yeah, I don't even know why I clicked that Helena to begin with, to be honest. Do I have Darius on this account? I do. There's a chance when we do the actual farming team, we might end up using Darius. We'll, we'll see. We gotta see what the stage actually is, and then we'll take it uh, from there. Yeah, the names are really funny in these. I like the Chingong one. Yeah, I need to get that Summer Marth up. I just don't play in A, right? So I don't keep track of that stuff, but uh, I'll probably level her in this event. I don't know though, I might not play this event much more because tomorrow is probably the Summer event. So that'll probably kill my uh, desire to play in A. I'll probably get a few more boxes open though, I suspect. Yeah, I, that happens a lot on NA with the font, and it's because the, the Japanese language, right, the way it's the written language is done, they can fit pretty long names in this smaller amount of space, and uh, that, that can cause some, like, localization issues very much so, and yeah, that, that, that's happened a few times where the names have to be tiny because of that. Uh, let's see. Not a particularly good hand right now for this kind of wave. Probably should have done the 60%. Damn it! Uh... Damn it again. Alright, so it's what? 3, 2, 3. That's really not that, uh, I, I wish this was one of those like one one twos or whatever, those are really fun, but I get they're, we're not quite at that point on, uh, on NA yet. <laughs> Banana Prince. Okay, well, that, uh, that was rough for Joan of Arc there. Alright, let's see what we come up with. Although, actually, that's not the stage I need to farm, but uh, I'll, I want to mess around with it a bit just because, but, uh, I need to farm the ones that dropped the mats now. I'm, I'm, I haven't cleared the shop yet. Mori, uh, because of the music, Mori's good for a few challenge quests in this event, thankfully. Not, not as many as Ku by any means, but there's, uh, there's a, there's a fight here and there that he's pretty good for. I wonder if Mori could work for Achilles. Protecting him would be very difficult. He's got the damage, but uh, protecting him would be a, a huge problem.
Do I really want to use apples right now? I mean, I've got a few. Yeah, we'll do an account review in a second here. Alright, let me think. Uh... Rosh is good here, Spartacus is good here, like that typical stuff. How much health did that... I forget. Uh, I think we want to Rosh on wave 2 then, because I'm thinking that boar had a decent amount of health. Atalante's fine. What do I have on this account? Darius might work. What does this account have? Let's see, we've got... Pretty much Atalante... And Darius, really. Darius doesn't have his third skill upgrade yet, but uh, might be able to make him work. Another CE drop, but uh, not that big of a deal. Don't know if this will work or not. We'll see. Summer Valkyrie. You know, I don't think they're going to do that because it will require too much work with the three versions. But who knows? If they're. If there is ever a time that they're willing to put in some work, that's one of the times, because summer events always make them a lot of money. And the waifus are popular, so... Could happen. But yeah, it's basically three summer servants in one. And it's a lot of voice acting and so on and so forth. But it probably makes decent money. Valkyrie's somewhat popular. If there's gonna be a problem on this team, it's gonna be Darius's damage. Well, fuck. There's ways to fix that. I I'd roll for Green Valkyrie unless they made her lame, right? They could always fuck that up. Like, they can fuck anything up, right? Like, they could give her, like, some crazy, like, mouth squeaky voice and just make her act like a dumbass or some, like, you know, they can, like, uh, Border Gurn. That's all I'm gonna say, Border Gurn, right? They, you know, that one of my favorite things that I wanted to roll on the most is now one of my least favorite things in FGO. So, you know, you have to see it to, to know, really. All right, Chad, is he going to have the damage? I think he would if this was JP Darius. Let's get that extra buster up. Doesn't, yeah, not, yeah, not bad. That's almost exactly the amount of extra damage, though, you would get out of his new third skill. So he could do it on JP, but uh, not quite. There's ways to fix that, though, but uh, it might hurt your farming a bit. I could change around the order, like where Arash dies and stuff. Yeah, they're never adding regular Border Gurn now. If they ever do more, they're just gonna want to do more Oberyn stuff, like for sure.
What could I do to make this better? I actually like Darius more voice acting wise in FGO than Excel Link. I, he's, I, I think he's a lot more unique in FGO. He's got that echoey sound. Uh, where in Extella Link, he just sounds like Rawr, just normal. Rawr. It actually sounds kind of lame in Extella Link. Like it's, it's just, he sounds like Blood X for the most part, right? And it's, it don't really work for me. So I, I much prefer uh, Fgo, like, like the echoey stuff. It just worked all the green, like flame stuff, right? I like it a lot better. But his attacks are a million times better in, uh, yeah, same for Lu Bu, I agree. I think Lu Bu sounds stupider in Extella Link as well. But his attacks, Darius's attacks in Extella Link look great. Let's see. Buff stacking wise, there's a few different CEs I could use, but it's not gonna really make up because Golden Sumo's level 100. Try Atalante, but I think Darius is better. I think Atalante would really fail on the ruler. I mean, it's it's okay. This isn't the best team I've ever made, but I, I really would like Ryder Darius though. I like his design, and then we'll get to see his full character, because his character is really only hinted at at his berserker form. You know, he still acts very kingly and like noble. He's not like you know a, a, a maniac, right? Um, but you don't get a whole lot of beyond that, right? You, know, you just get like his backstory and stuff. You don't get his actual personality and whatnot. Guys, I feel like Arash and Spartacus are like the free-to-play way to make farming easier. Like, who, uh, who would have thought? It's like, I, it's like I bring this up all the time. Like, they're just so, like, almost any stage that they'll make the farming pretty straightforward and easy. I actually don't need to cast the defense buff there. Now, if this event wasn't a, a lottery event, and it wasn't like a... Because free-to-play people don't normally have access to the event CEs that like post the drops, because they're normally from the Gasha. But in events like this, you do have access to them. And so if it wasn't a lottery event, you could give Chen Gong or something like Ox King, and that's another way to get your damage a little bit higher if you need it. Also, you could Grail Darius. That would, uh, that would work too. Because he's so close. I like how he just did 130k and he doesn't have the event CE. That's just Chen Gong stuff. But sadly, that's not really the node that I need to do. I need to get the shop done. All right, we'll do an account review now, and then I might play some JP, just uh, do some Stino account or some such. Oh. At least I'm gonna do the 10 boxes, right? Like, I'm not playing NA much, but you wanna at least get the 10 boxes done. So that takes, like, no effort to do at all. I, I might sneak in a few more boxes once. It, Cause JP might suck, man. The JP, I tell you what though, if the JP event just sucks, right? I'm gonna be so demoralized by that. I'm just gonna play some other games for a while, right? I'll just go play Ninja Gaiden and Hardcore Mecha and shit like that for a little while. Uh, and come back to FGO when it's, actually doing something because it you know I'm, I'm a jp player right and jp has just been so fucking lame for so fucking long right now so if, if the summer event is trash 
Uh, I'll just take a break, I think, for a bit. Maybe play some Arc Knights. All right, let's take a peek. Oh, we got a count review wise here. Uh, we got 300 pups. Uh, yeah, I think that's what we'll do. See, it's the first one that's up, so we'll go with that. Okay, let me shrink this a little bit. There we go. Alright, two month old account. Oh shit, this might actually be a, a, a proper account that needs help. Alright, two month old account, uh, finished summer five, very few mats, zero lures. I want some advice on how to level with uh, without much materials. So basically you're wanting characters that will help you out that can work at 111. Right, and that's, that's, there are plenty of characters like that, so that's the thing. Uh, who should I roll for? Who to grail? What to spend my rare prisms on? Well, I hope you're in my chat because there's really no way for me to give you advice on who to roll for unless I know what your taste is, right? It's like you have to know, do you care about challenge quests? Do you care about farming? Do you like waifus? Do you not like waifus, right? So it's like there's no, it's very hard to give general advice. The best I can do is like of, of those few budget things you can roll on that give you high return that like everybody wants, like Asclepius. Um, you know, other than that, there's not much advice I can give. Everything is 111 except units. Uh, presume golds are all MP1. 80 gold apples. That's not bad for such a new account. Like, for two months, 80, 80 apples. That's good. I wonder how many apples I have on the Stino account. I haven't really paid attention. Uh, in Camelot right now, early game was a chore. I know the feeling, but it's actually fun now with only story supports and beefy enemies. Uh, this guy knows what's up. This guy knows what's up. That's what I do right there. All right, what do we got here? Can you please add a note to my submission? I have a feeling I wasn't supposed to see this text. I think this was uh, supposed to go to Aerie or Bull. Uh, can you please add a note to my submission that this account also has NP1 Morgan 444? I'm guessing an NP2 uh, uh, Burgess. Uh, I I'm assuming that happened like after this in the submission. I couldn't resist rolling and now I can't edit the image or yet. I don't think I was supposed to see that. Um, behind the curtain, oh no. Okay, so NP2 Lily. So what do we got here? So, oh boy. So we basically, right now, you basically have nothing, right? So you basically have no saber other than Gozen, right? That's all you've got. So for farming, I, I would level Lily. Because Lily is really good for farming these days with all of her buffs. Now you'll have to actually do her strengthening quests, which is annoying, but she is really good for farming. Burgess is good for farming too. And I will say for an, an account, that's new and weak and you obviously aren't going to have any of the meta supports Burgess can really help like an account like this There's no way to do fancy three turning like oh look at all this MP gain I have right uh, and Burgess gives you that team-wide battery Right and that actually for an account like right at, at base level that that battery for the whole team that Burgess gives you is actually quite good So I actually might recommend Burgess over Lily that, that's a hard call because Lily has more like straightforward easy mode farming but Burgess can help you when you're fighting other classes that aren't even Lancers or Berserkers. So actually, I think, yeah, I don't know, he might not be a, a let me look, what are her mats in terms of Ascension? So, let's see. We got the event coming up, so uh, her mats will probably be in the summer event. I think they, they will do that, but there's no guarantee of that. But I, they normally do that where like new units uh, get their mats in events that are close to them. Okay, so Ascension, it's pretty easy. It's Bones, uh, Camelot Medals, only 16, and then Chains. And he's in Camelot, so he should be able to get those. So I, I think he could do it. And, and it's a little, I will say, that's a steeper Ascension curve than some. That's a lot of Chains. Like, you, you need over 30 Chains. That, that kind of sucks, but it's not too bad. So I, I would recommend Burgess, just because she'll help you for challenge quests and single target content, because that's what she's more aimed at. But she won't be bad for farming either, just because she'll give you universal battery. And again, most newer accounts are not going to be doing the fancy shit that like whales are doing and stuff. Uh, and she is kind of serviceable as a single target. And you need that because your only saber right now is Gozen. And Gozen's fine. She's a good unit, but she doesn't really work as a single target unit. Uh, if you get Burgess, that kind of will hold you over for a while. At some point, though, you're going to need to level something. Uh, if you end up rolling story, or a saber rate up or anything like that, I would say Bedivere, but right now you don't even have them and you'll only have them at NP1 when you beat Camelot. So I would say Caesar. 
but I wouldn't level Caesar like right now. I would level Burgist, and you probably won't need to level a single target saber for a little bit. But at some point, you are gonna need it. Okay, so you got Ur Uriel. She is good at 1 1 1 because she's just pretty much the NP. Um, however, she's not a very good universal archer. Like, she's just not because she's only good against males. She's really shitty if you fight a dragon or a boar or a female or a genderless, right? Like, there's just a lot of things that she's not very good at. Um, so, what do we got here? I'm assuming you Sith is MP4, is what you're saying? Um, thinking about making Uriel my main archer, but recently got two golds. So, if you like Uriel, like you just like her character and stuff, you can use her often. She really cannot be a main archer, though. Like, she just, she's godly whenever she gets her anti male damage, right? You don't even need the charm for her to be able to work. But there's a just, she's so weak. She, I think she is the worst archer in the entire game when you fight females uh, or genderless or a dragon or, or shit like that. Uh, now, if you do Grailer and you know, really pump up the numbers, she'll still be a serviceable single target archer, but it's, it's really not great. So if you fight like a really big, like if you fight Fluffy, right? In Lost Belt 6, you fight Fluffy, Uriel is just gonna fall flat on her face, right? Where if you invested in, like that into Sith, or into Robin, they could actually be your DPS there. It's, it's a noticeable step down. That being said, Uriel is still very good for a lot of the male bosses throughout the game. It could be very, very helpful. Uh, so if you... So I'm assuming right now your Sith is like NP3, and you've got that other copy. Uh, I'm assuming that's what's happening here. So your Sith is NP3, and you have another copy, so you could make her NP4. Now, a lot of people say, I'll just make her MP4. The thing is, you barely gain any MP damage from MP3 to MP4. It doesn't change that much. It, it adds up, you know, it's like, if, if you're like, oh man, Sith is like my favorite, then I would say absolutely you make her MP4, right? Like a little, you know, extra damage can definitely matter. But if you're not, you don't care that much about Sith and she's just gonna be like a side archer, then it's not really bad to burn it. If you're happy at MP3, no one would ever be like, oh, MP3 Sith is so weak. I'm like, no, MP3 Sith is very, very good. So if you just want rare prisms, it, it's completely reasonable uh, to burn that copy. Like, uh, seriously, if, you, if you're not a big Sith fan, I would say it's totally fine to burn that fourth copy. But if you are a huge Sith fan, then I wouldn't do it, and you might as well... Um, you, you might as well just get the MP up. Uh, that being said, I would recommend leveling Sith. I would level Sith and Tristan and uh, Arash. Those are the three archers I would worry about. Uh, I would pro in the order, I would probably do Sith first. Unless you're wanting to focus on farming, like you got the summer event coming up, and just just a, tomorrow potentially you're going to be doing the summer event, and you might want some farming help for that. And in that case, I would say uh, Arash should be your next level up. But for like dealing with Camelot and Babylon and everything else, I would say level Sith, then Arash, then David. That that would that would be the order, and you don't really need to level any other archer other than those. Um, and. Arash, you don't is not you don't need to level the skills much, right? If you level anything, it's just his third skill. You don't need to level the other two at all. And Sith does pretty well at one one one. Like obviously she scales with skill ranks, but Sith is a pretty serviceable you know early game unit for an account even at one one one. So I, I would that, that's that's pretty useful. Okay, so you've got a uh, big U, so that she does super well against males, and she does. Unlike Uriel, she still does pretty well against females, right? She's still a nice baseline decent unit. Um, so she's NP5. Uh, Normal Ku's only NP1 right now. He's still the best. Out of all your Lancers here, he's still the best. So if you like Ku, I would level Ku as your next Lancer. You don't need to level the AOE ones for the Lancer slot. You can use other units for your farming. Um, but you, you can do just you for now, but... Ku is really good. I mean, Ku is just such a broken unit. He will, he just, it's, this is J, this is a JP account. So, uh, I mean, my god, Ku is just so much, uh, help to an account for bosses and just getting shit done. So I, I would level Ku next, and then probably Leonidas. Uh, cause Leonidas also doesn't need skill ranks, but he's, he's, Leonidas is only for challenge quests and boss fights. He's not for farming at all. Doesn't pass the Baldi test. There's, there's no Baldi test. Don't, don't you start. Um, okay, so Ozzy's really good. Even at NP1, Ozzy is super good. Now, Antoinette, that's something we have not seen. We haven't seen a lot of accounts that are in the early stages and have Antoinette. Normally, if they have Antoinette, they're a pretty developed account. Um, well, for farming, 
Antoinette's okay, and she is and actually got some nice support on JP. She's got a lot of extra like man, she's kind kind of crazy how much utility she gives the team. So you could just level Ozzy and Antoinette. You're gonna need to level George though, for just typical taunt wall stuff. Uh, but you could hold off on not leveling Ushi or Ricky for a bit. Hmm. Uh, I'm trying to think. I mean, it's kind of tricky because Antoinette isn't the best for farming, although she is good for, for like team support and stuff. I would probably just level Ozzy and Antoinette for now and not worry about leveling another one uh, until you get closer to like Lost Belt 5. Uh, then you then you could level Ricky or Ushi. I would recommend Ushi, but if you like Ricky a lot, then you, it's fine to level R Ricky instead of Ushi. Like, you, they're, they're close enough. Um, and then you, at some point though, regardless of what I'm saying about writers here, you need to level George. All accounts need to level George. It doesn't, it does not matter what the context is. But you don't need to level his other skills other than his first one, so, and you don't even have to level it that much in the early days, so you don't have to worry about it too much. Um, no Asclepius, that's unfortunate. No Martha, so you have a real anti-debuff uh, problem. That's a, that's a real issue there. Um, okay, so I would... Probably level Medea because you're you're lacking everything right now. You've got Castoratoria, um, but why I recommend Medea is because I think you're gonna at some point you're gonna need her utility. You have no buff removal on this account, and the only debuff clear you have is Castoratoria, and it's only on her NP, which you can't do immediately, especially on an account like this. Um, so I, I, I think Medea makes sense. And you don't need to level Medea's skills much at all. Like, it's okay if they're really low, but y you're just gonna wanna have the option to be able to clear debuffs like that. Now, in the short term, though, uh, for like, Summer 6 coming up, Nidocris is really good. Nidocris is great for farming. And so let me look, now that I know you have Cast Star Tori, I didn't even think to look ahead to your casters, but I didn't think you'd have her, but, uh, or any of the meta supports. Uh, that's good for Uriel, though. Uh, that kind of makes Chiron, though, a lot better. And it makes Robin a lot better. I'm trying to think if you'd still level Sith. Probably, because you can still use Sith with Castoratoria. Um, that is kind of awkward, though, that you don't have... Because you already leveled... Cause if, it, if it was me... The, now, you you clearly like Uriel, so that's why you leveled her, and that's fine. But if it was me, I would have leveled Robin, because Robin has so much general use, and he's art and that works with Castoratoria, then you can use Robin against anything. But because you already leveled Uriel, I probably wouldn't do that. And I would just stick with Uriel and just have her take advantage of the art bonus, and I would still level Sith. Um, you don't have a lot of art stuff, though, unfortunately. Um, I, I, I'm trying to think if Ricky is better than Ushi it, because you have Castoratoria. I would say so, but there are times that you need that hard survival on your DPS, so Ushi's evade is still really good. But overall, I'd say Ricky's probably the better pick right now just because of Castoratoria because I mean Castoratoria is just is very good and she's, she synergizes with Ricky really well. Uh, okay so I think Medea is pretty important. Um, I think Hans is still important. Being able to have, have Hans work with Castoratoria is probably more important than like the other options. Uh, I would say Mozart but you don't have enough art DPS to, to really worry about that. So I would say Medea and Hans are the two to worry about. And then, uh, and, uh, and Chin Gong, you've already leveled Chin Gong, and then you just need Chris up. So those are the ones to focus on right now. And then after that, maybe level Babbage, just because you're probably going to need another DPS caster. But, uh, yeah, I would say Medea and Hans are the main priority, and then Nido Chris. Yeah, this account would get wrecked by Fluffy right now, but it's such a new... No one's expecting you to beat Fluffy, you know, when you just started playing the game. Okay, you got Vinch. Um, she's not really ready yet, but that does help your, your Buster stuff. And she's MP2. Uh, yeah, her mats are pretty rough for a new player. Kind of same thing with Ozzy. I know she is a good support, but is she a good DPS? She's not... Honestly, on her own, she's not like some OP super carry support. Like, she kind of needs to work with other strong supports to be really good. She's still good, though. She's still a good support on an account like this. She's not that good of a DPS, but she's good enough for farming. Like, if you need to farm riders or something, she's totally fine for that. There's big battery, AoE, does damage, no big deal. But she's not, she is absolutely not a DPS carry. It just no way. She that's just not how Vinch works. Um, so I would just level Hundred Face. I mean, Hundred Face is the best budget assassin in the game. So Vinch can be your AOE. Hundred Face can be your single target. And then Vinch is also a support, so you get double the value, right? So you have Vinch and Hundred Face, 100. percent You you don't really need to level Fuma right now because you have Vinch. So I wouldn't worry about that. I would really I would only worry about Hundred Face. Like she's that good. 
Uh, and if you don't like 100 phase, then you're kind of screwed, to be honest. I mean, I guess Serenity, but uh, 100 phase is a lot better. Um, yeah, I, just 100 phase and Vinch, I would say, like, completely. Okay, so you got Ku Alter. I have a feeling this guy picked Ku Alter as his free five star. This is 300 pops. Uh, I don't know if he's. I don't think he's in chat right now, but I highly suspect this guy picked Ku Alter as his free five star. It just makes total sense. Um, I mean, not a bad, not a bad pick. I mean, dude probably used his initial SQ to get Castoria, right when she was rated up in the event. And then used his summit ticket for Ku Alter. So this guy's actually got once once this guy levels up his skills, this guy's account is crazy strong. Like like, like right if, if all of his units were leveled, he could murder Gilfest right now. Like it just says Ku Alter in the Castoria. Like, I mean he'd be super ready. He could, all he needs to worry about is kill ranks, really. Uh Bernie Alter's damage gets pretty good. I wouldn't worry about that. Like you gotta get her skill ranks up a bit and get her to 80, but uh, she's okay. She's good for farming. Um, so between between Brunhilder and Ku Alter, you don't really need to level any other Berserkers. Now for just farming, you're going to still want Spartacus. As we've shown on the stream, Spartacus is very useful. So, uh, but Brunhilder can really do a lot for, for farming as well. You could do have her use her battery skill, have a Rosh blow up turn one, and then have her go off in turn two, and then have you know something else for turn three, things like that. Um, so if you leveled anything else, I would level Spartacus. But other than that, you don't, like, just Brunhilder and Kualter are really all the Berserkers you're going to need. Like, that's just very wide-reaching units right there. Okay, Oberim, uh, he's a good unit, but not, uh, he's pretty unpractical, in my opinion, uh, from the most part. He can still be good for farming and stuff, though. Like, he's not bad. There's, there's a few fights I think he's really, really good for. Um, okay, let's see, what do we got here, though? Kiara was my carry for quite some time. Even as NP1, yeah, she's she's pretty good. Uh, Oberm is NP2. I don't uh, didn't even read the Lost Belt, but I already love him. How is he as a main DPS? He's not really that great as a main DPS. He's kind of like a DPS that also does support. He's way more about the support, I would say, and like the rope. Like he's kind of awkward. If you wanted him to be like your absolute main DPS all the time, that that would be tough. There are times, hey, uh, Aurora Veil, I think I say that. Um, it's go time. Wait, what? what uh, am I missing something here? But thank you for the 18 months. I, I appreciate it. But Oberimk is certainly usable, right? But he's not like some, oh my god, he's just going to melt everything all of the time, right? That, that just doesn't really work that way. Um, is Random Dog, is he a good boy? Obviously, Lobo is a good boy. Also, I would legitimately recommend leveling Lobo on this account. Like, very much so. Because you, you your account is... The one huge problem with it is you have a massive lack of utility. And Lobo gives you buff removal, and then he's also an Avenger, so he can kill Zeus for you, and bosses like that. So, you don't have- I wouldn't, like, put him a super high priority, but I would definitely get Lobo leveled, right? He, he can absolutely murder rulers, and he gives you buff removal, he's a nice backup DPS too, if you need to fight a neutral, or you need to kill assassins, you don't have a lot of, like, good assassin killers. You do have Ku Alter, though, so there's that. Uh, but yeah, I, th I think Lobo is good for this account, but because of Ku Alter, I would, I would not put Lobo as super high priority. So if I'm looking at this now, my priority is definitely a Saber. Your Saber slot is your weakest slot, 100%. Your Saber slot kind of sucks. So uh, I, I either level, just keep leveling Gozen or start leveling Burgess. Either one is fine. But ultimately, you're going to want to level them both, I think. But um, if you level anything here, it'd be Koo. But yeah, if it was me, uh, Saber, 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 and then maybe Rider. Your Rider slot's kind of sad. Uh, other than other than that, though, your other slots aren't in, like, die or need. And because of Ku Alter, you can kind of just beat anything, really. Uh, if you love- uh, Mash should definitely get those skills up on Mash. It's, just, it's never too soon to level up Mash's skills, I'll say that. At least in terms of challenge quests and main story content. Maybe not for farming. For farming, then it's a Rosh and Spartacus, right? And maybe Chin Gong. Okay, I think this account will be fine. I mean, because you have Castro Toria, I, I think your account will be totally fine. His account got progressively more disgusting. Yeah, it started off like really scuffed, right? And then as soon as we got here, I was like, okay, that's pretty big. And then this, and then and then that. that you know, those are like the three new, you know, strong supports. So, uh, yeah, his account, this account will be incredibly strong once it just levels up what it has. Like, it has everything it needs to... The only weakness, like I said, is, is utility. But if you level up things like Lobo and, and Medea, you can cover those 
those weaknesses, because that's the only issue this account has. I mean, between Ku Alter, Oberim, Venge, uh, Castor, Toria, this account is going to be a, a super monster. No Angra. Hey, it, what are you going to do? It's a, it's a newbie account. All right, well, uh, let's jump over to NA. Let me get Samsung Dex going here. Actually, no, wait. Uh, we already... Uh, I need Stino account. That's what we're going to do. I need to play the Stino account, so I need to get the emulator instead. And we already smacked Blood Axe. Really, one of the better things you could get on that account is Waver. It's like, it's just so universal, no matter what card colors you want to use. Waver is good on an old account, new account, medium account, right? It doesn't matter where the account is in its life. Because, like, Scatty is not that useful for a newbie account. It's better than nothing, absolutely, but she doesn't super carry, uh, like, a scrub account. Especially if you don't have quick DPS. Alright, let's do some Sinnoh account. Man, I'm still ashamed of that, that Scaff performance against Blood Axe. I kind of want to twink the supports more. I mean, that last team we used was much better. Like, the changing, adding the extra taunt wall and everything was just a lot better, but that was still so sloppy. Honestly, how fast an account gets stabilized oh, it depends a lot on what events are available. If you start playing an account, like, during a lottery event, and so you're using your level ups that give you free AP refills on the lottery event, and it happens to be a really good lottery, you can actually get an account like in insanely good shape crazy quickly. Like, so fast. Uh, and then some people spend money on SQ, like, resets. Or, or, or they don't even, they just use the SQ that they get in either way. But, like, people that are willing to whale eventually sometimes use their SQ to just farm, just farm so much at the beginning and get an account stabilized like way faster. But there's no need to do that, right? It's like, I just enjoy the game, right? If you get an account that strong, you kind of make the story a joke, so. Yeah, I tell you, if you started playing FGO right after Lost Belt 6, that, that's a really bad time to start playing FGO. Which we, we see that on the Stino account, that's when I, I made the Stino account, and it basically has nothing, because there hasn't been a single event this entire time. Right, so it, that's been rather shit. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's how quick an account gets going, I think is dependent on the player, the luck, and then the bigger thing is just what events are going on. I think that has a huge impact on the speed of a, an account getting stabilized or not. But I think the, the, like these last like month and a half, two months have been like the worst time to get into Go. Just awful. Like in terms of a, a, like an event and like acquiring things, you know, obviously the main story is, is still there. The early main story though, oh my god. I can't wait to get to Camelot. We're almost there. We're, we're almost through the desert. What we're gonna do is we're gonna, hey Cairo, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna play the summer event on, oh, and Cairo with the resale for 45 months. That's a little bit of time. Um, we're gonna play the summer event on the Sinnoh account, and then after the summer event is over, we're gonna go right into Camelot. That's the, uh, that's the goals. Because of that, I need to fucking get America over with. Oh god, I need to do that tonight. Because I, I don't want to finish the summer event and be like, now let's go do America, right? I don't- We need to get that out of the way before the, the summer event. Fuck, and I've been procrastinating on that, and it's because I actually forgot that I hadn't finished America yet. It's a big part of why, uh, I'm going kind of slow. All right, George is the only Bond that really matters. I, I want to get Hans Bond 10, though. I have Hans at, like, Bond 8 and 9 on, like, every account, and I don't have him on Bond 10 on any account. I really need to fix that, because his Bond CE is actually nice for a few fights in the main story here and there. It's really fun when you can use Hans's Bond CE in a long-term fight where it's okay that he doesn't have starting NP and he's Grail so he can stay alive and then you're using like a DPS that has good magic resist already and especially with someone with like Goddess Core because then you've got like 80% debuff resist just all of the time you don't have you don't need like a skill activated or anything We'll have account reviews open again soon um, 
However, when we get to like Camelot and stuff, I pro I'll, I'll probably really slow down on doing them. I might only do like one a day, uh, if that. And if the summer event, by some miracle of some godsend OP amazing 10 out of 10 event, then I might just be playing that and not doing account reviews. But let's be real, the summer event is probably going to suck and I'll have plenty of time to do account reviews. But uh, yeah, when we get to like really good content, I might not do account reviews as rapidly. But uh, we're probably not going to be at that point anytime soon, I guess we'll see. Yeah, we're we're almost through, and so we'll we'll let people send a new submission soon. I just I don't ever want to do where I do like ten account reviews in one stream because I think that really takes away from the accounts that we like. I want to be able to focus on them and take my time, and you know. You don't want to just feel like, like, I don't want them to all blend together. You don't want, like, the, every uh, account. Because if I, all I'm doing is account reviews, a lot of people, it's going to get really auto piloty, right? You know, it needs to just be like, oh, you only did it one or two times for the whole stream, or two or three times, or whatever. And that way, it, I think you stand out more that way. I, I don't want it to be lame, is what, what I, you know, for the, the people that, you know, waited, you know, a month or whatever to get their account reviews, so... I would definitely, if you want to get a submission in though, you're definitely going to want to get it ready now because I, I have a bad feeling. I think in the long run, eventually submissions will really slow down and then it'll be a lot easier for like new viewers that, that are like new to the game and stuff to be able to get theirs in and get it looked at. But we have like a backlog right now of people that are wanting to send them in. So I think for a while, it's going to just be awful and like the, it's just going to be the flood. But a after a little while, it'll probably calm down and it'll, it'll work out better. I did the Nero's challenge quest with Sian and Napoleon. I hated it so much. RNG of aid. Yep, I was just talking about that. It's not even a hard fight. It's it's a very simple challenge quest. The game tells you the kill order, right? You break Napoleon's health bar, then you break Fionn's health bar, then you break uh, Nero's health bar, then you kill Napoleon, then you kill Fionn, then you kill... Like that, the game like holds your hand. The gimmicks are incredibly straightforward and easy. There's just a bullshit RNG of aid. By the way, Cairo, you're probably not surprised by this, but Ku makes that challenge quest really easy because you make him the first DPS and uh, he has sure hit. And so he can normal card down Napoleon's health bar and then he can, uh, you can have like a Berserker come in later in the fight that also has the damage CE. And then he can, that he can deal with Nero Bride. And then when that's over, it's it's time to, to kill Napoleon. And then, then Ku has his MP by then. And then Ku just one shots Napoleon. And it doesn't matter if Napoleon has evade because Ku has sure hit, right? It makes it so much easier. Like basically, if you have your own coup, right? You have your own coup for the DPS, and you summon a friend's berserker. It, it, it makes it so so much easier. Yeah, I guess if you have a uh, kill Kamesh, you could fuck with it like that. That's uh, that's kind of funny. If I had the, the patience and I wasn't like more focused on the summer event coming out, I'd probably make a video where the team is like Ku in the front is DPS and then Beowulf is the Berserker because that, that can work. And Beowulf has sure hit. And you make the other four units on the team all support, like all taunts and supports and stuff. Because uh, I, I know that can work and that'd be a fun team and I want to do more Beowulf stuff. I, I might try to squeak that video out. I don't know if I'm going to have time though. It, it really depends on if summer is, is good or not. If summer is garbage and is like really boring, uh, that, then that video might happen. Uh, but if summer is actually worth a damn, it probably won't happen. I don't know, I might not have time, because I'm wanting to play some other games, and then uh, if, let's say, Blackbeard gets an animation update, gotta make a video for that. And surely there's gonna be something video worthy in the summer event, so I, I don't know, we'll just see what happens. But I really like the setup I came up with for that challenge quest. I just think the challenge quest is, uh, crap. Oh fuck, Tales of Arise is soon! You're right, it's, it's on the 9th for the PC version. Oh crap, yeah, I don't, I, I don't think we're gonna have time. I, I don't know, maybe I, I can squeeze it in, but I doubt I'm gonna have time to... I wish! Why couldn't Tales of Arise come out like a week ago? Or, or even two weeks ago? It, it's been so... Fucking dead on FGO for longer than it's ever been dead, right? And then as soon as FGO is gonna be alive again, 
And then Tales of a Rise, Rise comes out. Like, are you kidding me? Ugh. Dude, I, I'm really glad that my desk is so sturdy. Like, it, it's unwavering. There's, oh man, five Hans coins, so strong. Dude, I love that, was it that Twitch Prime emote? I, what is it called? I can't remember. It's, it's, it's the other half of table here. I don't remember what it's called though. But uh, that's such a good emote because you could so easily make that emote just the, the angry person with the table flip. But then making the table like, you know, a character makes it so good. Yeah, there it is. Flip this. That's such a good emote. That's absolutely incredible. Cause like flip this works on its own. You don't act. You don't have to have the other half of it uh, for it to be good. All right, let's. Uh, I want. Can we get Hans's upgraded third skill now? I think we probably can. I don't know. You might need to get the ascension, but. Uh, that's gonna make our lives a lot easier once we have that. And that, dude, that guy, it's funny, when an account is this weak and you, you have so, like, few supports, Hans's third skill battery is actually really useful because you don't have a lot of ways to get battery. Like, what are you gonna do, Chin Gong, you get 10%? Right, it's only so good. I wonder if this is a boss fight. It might be. Might bring that for the attack stat. Yeah, I think that's correct. Hopefully we don't need Ushi. Because my back row is kind of a joke. I think Chin Gong and Hans are the like the budget supports that get the most boom for their buck overall for an account. Uh like this one. Oh yeah, we can like use Steno. Excuse me, this is the Steno account. I really need to limit break this CE. Legitimately useful, especially in the early days. Wait, okay, what's balanced? Yeah, oh, David too, but David's not a caster. But yeah, David obviously, because David gets... If David is your only archer that you level, it's actually quite good, especially on JP, because he has an upgraded NP. So he's a perfectly serviceable boss killer, honestly. Uh, and then he gives you survivability for the entire team and increases your NP gain because of his deck. Um, but yeah, as of a, for a general support, D David is honestly one of the best units you can... Why do you think I, the David test exists? I mean, David is legitimately one of the best units you can level because you're getting so many things in one place. You're getting a damage, a surprisingly good damage dealer, and then you're getting an incredibly good support for just keeping the team alive, and he increases your NP gain, and he has good self-survival. Like, it's just good, right? David is, is such a good unit to level. And like, when you get to Gwayne, you know, David can fuck him up uh, while also keeping the team alive. And Gwayne is the first hard boss, so it's not like, it's not an arbitrary thing to bring up, right? It's like the first boss that can give you a, a problem, and if you have at least David ready to go, you're in pretty good shape. Even if you're summoning an, a friend, like an OP land, uh, an archer from your support list to help you kill Gwen, uh, it, it, having a David to help them can make it a lot easier. Now you could just solo, but some people don't know how to do that, and you also just might happen to have like the worst archers ever for soloing. Okay, please don't kill with the person. He, there's no way, he's only level 50, you shouldn't kill him. Okay, now we're good. But David doesn't have a targeted 50% battery trash support. That really is how some people see it. Meanwhile, basically, 
there's just no way for a new account to get any kind of you know battery like that. The most you're gonna get is things like Chen Gong, Shakespeare, and Hans. That's that's kind of all you got going for you. I could have just NP'd here. I don't think this is a boss fight. Doesn't seem like it. Well, too late now. Yeah, everybody loves Karna's animations, but uh, Arjuna's are super good too, and I, I don't mind uh, Rama's either. I don't think Rama's are as good as Karna's or Arjuna's, but they're still fine. Like, they're totally good. That's true, you can always just pick Waver. I mean, I would say for most people, if you're going from a pure practicality standpoint, Waver is the best thing you can pick, or Kualter, because you can always summon a- it's so easy to summon a friend's Caster Artoria, or Waver, or Merlin, right? It's so easy to do that, that having some, an OP DPS like Kualter can be very helpful. Oh, this is a boss fight, how about that? Well, um... Yon might be AUE, but Deer Mid's got the buff removal, but now I think we kill Fion, the AOE's a bigger problem. How good of a DPS can Rama be here? Enkidu's a good pick too, actually, no joke. Because Enkidu not only will murder every archer you ever see, and every berserker you ever see, he'll also murder every foreigner you ever see, and other weird bosses that happen to be, um, threat to humanity. So he just, he's a super effective a lot more often than most Lancers would be. Yeah, and Fluffy, he's, he's better, he's absolutely better for, for Fluffy than Kualter is. So yeah, and Kidu's, I would say the top picks, I, I, that might sound weird, something like a, a, a Lancer, but I think the top picks are Waver, Kualter, and Enkidu. I think those are the best, from a pure gameplay standpoint, like, Enkidu is not a meme at all. He is that good. Well, pretty sure his evade right now is RNG. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, uh, smack Deer Mid here. I could Art Chain if I wanted to. I don't think I need to do that, though. Yeah, Joan of Arc's good. I think she's up there. Uh, if, uh, only though if you're looking at it from a challenge quest, you know, kind of perspective. And I don't think she's as good as those other picks, but I do think she's up there. Like, she is good as well. Like, Joan of Arc, no joke, is good in basically every single Gilfest challenge quest. And the Gilfest challenge quests are pretty tough. Um, but yeah, I, I, she's insanely impactful in every single one of them. And she got that buff on JP, so she actually gives you a little bit of oomph too now, which is quite nice. Those are just fun, like, because Joan of Arc's good, and it, it's nice to have that strong support to protect the team, and it's, like, really lore-fitting and all that. But she's not OP, right? She's very good, and she can be like, oh boy, that helps, right? But it's not like, oh man, I'm just trivializing, what a joke battle. Like, if you're fighting Fluffy and you're using Joan of Arc, you're still gonna have to figure out, you know, you're gonna have to understand the fight and think about the team and, and set everything up properly, right? It doesn't... It does not trivialize it by any means. So I'm gonna heal George, so he might get impeded next turn. Just increase his odds of living here. Yes. I wouldn't want him to die this turn, have new units show up, and then have them get impeded. That would not be ideal. I like how Siegfried is lower level, but he has more health than Rama. But I really stand by this. I think for most players, the best thing you can pick for your free five star is whoever you like the most and just enjoy the game. Because you can beat this game uh, with mostly budget stuff, right? Like it's no, it's fine. Like yeah, you might have to work and you're gonna have to use your head and plan, but that, that's a part of what makes the game more fun. 
Now, it depends, you know, some people truly enjoy being meta slaves and whatnot, and that's fine. If that's what you enjoy, then by all means, pick Waver or Coup Alter, that, that's, that's, that's no big deal. But if you're like, man, I, I like the Fate franchise, Artoria's awesome, I want to just play through the game with Artoria, pick Artoria then, right? Like, I, I'll pick Ozzy, whatever you like, right? I think, I think that's overwhelmingly the best thing to do. Now, for, again, depends on the person, it, you know, everyone has different tastes and what they like, but I think for most people, don't worry about it. I think some people get so scared that if they don't pick the meta thing, they're just going to be so screwed and they're, they're not going to be able to do anything. That's not, that's not the case, right? If you ever get stuck on something and you feel like you're so lacking and your units suck, there are app, they're just budget units you can, you can level up to augment whatever you leveled prior. It's always fine, right? If you need buster stuff, you can level Chin Gong, Shakespeare. If you need general survivability, Mash, David, Hans, right? If you need quick, go fuck yourself. If you need art, you got Mozart, Hohenheim. If you need taunts, you know, Leonidas, George. Uh, if you need DPS, you got one for every slot except for caster. Uh, you know, again, go fuck yourself. Uh, so yeah, for the most part, you're always fine, right? It's like you can always recover no matter what, what you got. Um, okay, let's see. I guess I just charm now because fuck it. Hmm. Stheno DPS or Grapsm NP? I think we do Stheno DPS. Who needs NPs? What if you like Lantoria and she's in key one, then you, you grail her. Uh, cause if you chose her, that means you like her and you're okay with grailing her. So then you grail the shit out of that, and then you 2k forward, and then you pretend she's in P2, right? You get her to level 100, and then you get her to 2k forward, and it's like, I, it's like I'm in P2, right? And then you just hope she gets rated up down the road. Cause here's the thing. If you get her in P1 now, yeah, it don't feel so great, right? The way her her kit is, it's it's really annoying. But if they ever give her a good rate up and then you get her, now you're in P2. Where if you didn't pick her now, then she'd just be in P1, right? And you, and if you really like her, then go 120, right? You go 122 k fo. That's the saddest shit ever, chat. Ch that is copium. That's like the omo. You're sitting there with your phone Right, and you're, you got a level 120. Is that gonna happen? You think someone out there, a level 120, Lancer Artoria, 2k foe, 10, 10, 10 skills, and MP1. I mean, that is, that is copium, man. Uh, that feels, you just, you like, but, but she's gonna get rated up again, right? She's not, she's good now, right? Yeah, then you've got to hope for an NP upgrade, right? And uh, it'll be better. But she's got big damage in terms of like her, her, her skills, right? Her skills have a large damage up on it. And then she's got uh, uh, the huge battery, right? Piercing vulnerability every time she NPs. That's all good stuff. At least she's got that niche. Now, obviously that's not in the buff they should have given her, but if you are fighting an enemy where her niche is applicable, then it's nice, so... Yeah, it sucks that everything is limited. Virtra is one of the few things that's not. Virtra and Achilles. How lucky am I, chat? I, I don't like that many 5 stars. Like, I really don't. I'm, I'm way more into the 1 to 4 stars, especially the 1 to 3 stars. Uh, but, like, I'm a, I like Achilles a lot, a lot, a lot, and he's unlimited, right? And then Virtra really surprised me in that I actually like Virtra, and she's unlimited. And then, like, I like Mordred, and she's unlimited, right? So, uh, I I'm super lucky in that department, so I don't have to deal with it. I I've gotten spooked by them, right? I've gotten spooked by Achilles and stuff, so. Oh, and I like Enkidu, and Enkidu's unlimited. Like, and over the years, over the, a lot of those were added. Actually, almost, no, no none of those are day one. Mordred is not day one, Enkidu is not day one, Vertra is not day one. Uh, Achilles is not day one. Those were all added into the game down the road and over Fgo's life They almost never add unlimited five stars, right? But the few times they have they've pretty much all been units that I like So uh, yeah lucky and a lot of times it's worked out for me because I've been able to pick them through the tickets or uh, Through just getting spooked by them like it's, it's unironically been very useful for me Yeah, I've got Enkidu on like every single account ever so this is the only account actually that doesn't have Enkidu the one to three star account got Enkidu for God's sakes, and it, it can't level him because Enkidu's not a, a three star, but uh, it still got him. Yet, yeah, give it a minute. We'll see what happens. 
Do I want to bring? I'll just put David. This is probably trash. Actually, we'll do that. We don't. We don't use her enough. I do need to bring George though for the bond. Kind of have to bring Steno for her bond. I feel. I feel like. We're gonna have to get her coins, and like the only way to get them right now is through Bond, so we, we're gonna have to get her as high as possible for Bond. Yeah, I got Odysseus twice. I remember I burned Odysseus, and then I immediately got Odysseus again. That was so dumb. I was like, I'm back! Are, are you talking to me, Lara? Because I never used, I never used Avenger Ushi to beat Demeter. Like, what are you talking about? Not only did I not do that, but I physically can't. And, and no matter how much I would want to, if I did like her or not, it would be completely impossible. Oh, is this an Ushi joke? Or are we just talking about regular Ushi or something? But like, cause you can't summon a support there, right? I literally could not use uh, Avenger Ushi there if I wanted to or not. By the way, Ricky is probably better than Ushi, uh, in that fight. Just, uh, I'm just saying. But yeah, there's, there's no supports there. No fun allowed. Although it's kind of good though because it makes people, you know, not suck, so. You misclick there, buddy. <laughs> yeah, it's a split, uh, Odysseus coming back. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Ushi is really good, though, for Demeter. It's just, that fight is so good for Reki because the boss is AoE with a decent hit count. So he's just guaranteed to be able to get his MP pretty smoothly. I had David on the team here, but uh... Every time I see Talos, I think of Big O. And I didn't really even like Big O. Uh, I, I haven't... Though, to be fair, I only saw it when I was a, a, a youngin, and I have never, and I, I didn't even watch all of it. I only watched like a few episodes occasionally. I, I, and I don't really even remember it. Like, I, I don't even know what the story was about at all. Um, and, and now that, I, I honestly should go back and watch that now that I'm older and see if I like it at all. But I might like it even less, who knows. But that, that's not an anime that I actually remember the plot of. In, I, I don't know, any, I, I, I could not even tell you the premise. Like, I have absolutely no fucking idea what Big O is about. Oh, we just, we just NP'd two Lancers. That, uh, that did not pan out there. I've been considering Grayling Caligula, but don't know if it's worth the investment. What do you say? So, it's got, it, from a pure practicality standpoint, it, he can be useful, but it's not... Great. It, 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 it's really not great. It, it, it's, a, it's, it's a gimmick for the most part, right? And the few times that he's super good, um, he is good, but there's other options. It's not like it's not like Gra Grail Caligula is the only thing that could work there, it, although he can. Um, so Caligula is a, it, it, it's like if you like him a lot, it's not like you can't make a Grail Caligula work like you can, but it's it's not anything like Grailing Ushi or Ku or David or or, or or even Arash, right? It's it's not going to be that kind of universally useful. Um, so yeah, it. But he's awesome, right? Like uh, his voice acting is so good, and it's not like he's bad. So and and I will say for those few fights, 
that Caligula can be extremely helpful in, he's much easier to set up when he's Grail. Not only would he do more damage, but like if you do want his NP, and there are some fights where Caligula's NP is actually a game changer. Um, and if you are in one of those fights, it's so much easier to enable it if Caligula is Grail. So. Like, for example, you can fuck up Demeter with Caligula big time, but you don't need Caligula to do it, right? You can just fuck him up with uh, with, uh, with Ricky Boy and, and Ushi. It's not necessary, but you can do it, and it's fun, so... A little loud there on the music. This Nightingale makes sense because there's all these different classes. Honestly, if I get her to Bond 6, I could probably just keep her there. Like, yeah, it's nice to have her at, like, Bond 7 or something for... for Gwadia, but, I mean, she can beat Gwadia at Bond 1. He doesn't even need to be Bond 5, so... It's it's not that big of a deal, really. Oh yeah, I can see that Gambler. I mean, you can use Caligula as a straightforward DPS any time a Berserker is, is, is useful. And, I mean, it's a fun thing. I'll put it this way. If you grail Caligula, you're going on an adventure, right? And that's, that's kind of like Mori for me. Because Mori's good, but Mori's not like some super OP amazing 3-star. I grailed him because I like him. And then I try to make him work because I like him, right? A lot of, it's not like, it's not like Mori is necessary for almost any of the videos I've ever used him in, right? Although uh, there's been times that he can definitely make some headache fights a lot less of a headache. Um, but it's similar with, Cal with Caligula, right? There, he is very workable, uh, but you've got to be able to do normal card damage setups or use him for his utility, right? It, it, those are your two options. And there are fights that he's really, really bad for, but... It's a fun thing to do. I don't I don't think it's like if you grail him, it's not like you're fucked. It's not like he's it's not like trying to make Sanson work. Right? It's nothing like that. It's not like trying to make Jekyll and Hyde work. You know, it's not you're you're not gonna be that level of disappointed, right? If you need big normal card damage, you can get big normal card damage. I'll say this though, for the love of God, get the buff success chance command code. The landling mask, because uh you don't the less RNG on your Imperial privilege the better. So yeah, definitely get that. Uh, I don't think the team matters too much here. Let me just, uh, let me just do that. Oh, I could do the... I need to level the fucking craft essences that I use so they're at the top of the list. I'll be really glad when... I got the upgraded NP for Darius. The thing is, Oki's pretty solid. I think Waver's better though, even for quick. Even though he's not quick specific, Waver is just too good. Like Oki's fine, and if you like her, you know, go for it. You know, she's a passable quick support. But not having a quick support is is not that big of a deal ultimately, because a lot of the quick units are so good, and you can always use Waver to support your quick units, and then you can also use Waver for literally everything else, right? Like, it's not like Oki is bad or anything, it's not like she can't get stuff done, it's not like she can't be a useful support, she can be, but Waver, no one in their right mind would argue that Waver is is not a useful unit, right? Like, he's so universally helpful in all circumstances, and he'll work just fine for quick units, and you, for your quick units you just use Waver and Hans, and then you're, you're fine. But if you like her, it's fine, but her general use is much much lower than waivers or coup alters. That's just that's just a fact. Her her general use is much 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 lower. But if you really like her, you're not you're not shooting yourself in the foot by picking her. There's nothing like that. Darius is a big boy. Do you all think they're gonna make him bigger when he gets an animation update in the year 2077? I, I think they'll make him a little bit bigger, but not much. I think he'll he'll barely change. I think, but I think he might get just ever so slightly bigger. But I, I, I think it'll be very minor. We'll see though. Hey, look, 
we, we've got a good reference here, right? Because like, you can see how close he is to the turn, the black bar for like the turn UI, how it's like faded there to you know, make it, you know, be able to read the text easier. Uh, so we'll be able to see off of that because he stands up straight, right? Now, there's, I guess, a chance that his animation update wouldn't stand up straight, but uh, but as of right now, he's standing up very straight, so it should be easy to compare uh, how, how big he is. They made Ushi a lot uh, taller, because her original sprite was just so whack. I want, dude, I want so many grailed low stars. It's just, then they can, you know, I like having the non-grailed ones, you know, to like for videos and just making the game harder and stuff. But it just sucks because so many of the key low stars are some of my favorite, like character-wise. I, I want to grail George, I want to grail Bedivere, I want to grail Robin, I want to grail Leonidas. Um, but then I, I kind of need to level a second set of them, right? Uh, which is obnoxious, but uh, I don't know. We'll see. Because George, I've always George's character is I, I, he's such a cool guy, and like every time he shows up in events, he's awesome. And his bond CE is great, and then his animation update is just it's awesome, right? I I, I would and a Grail George can be very practical because you can have him go around the wheel and just keep protecting the team and stuff, and that can be very very strong. Uh, so I don't know. Yeah, it's something I wanted to do. I, I, I want him and Leonidas and uh, and Black Bar. I fucking hate. I hate so much that going to 120 uses the irregular grails. Why did they do that? I hate that so fucking much because now I have to grail Ku a billion fucking times and I don't get to grail Percival. I don't get to grail Tesla, Leonidas, all these things. Right? Fuck, man. God, why? It's so lame that they did that. I I would really like to at least grail Black Bart once, because he's like uh, Spartacus and Arash, where you give him one grail and he gets ten levels. Now, unlike Spartacus and Arash, he's not half as good as them, so it doesn't really matter if he's grailed or not. Uh, but it'd just be nice, because I, I like Black Bart, and making him a little bit better would be cool. Uh, Daria special. I will say the 10 levels for Blackheart help him for farming. They're not gonna really help him that much for challenge quests and whatnot. Unless you're using him for like his support role, which ultimately he's probably better at, so like we're using him for like the crit stuff. Um, and then if you need like, oh he showed up in the back row, but it's not time to, to do the star absorb thing and so on and so forth. Um, you could wait a turn and have him be less likely to die. But honestly, Black Bart with a Star Bomb Craft Essence can be a pretty handy budget support. Like, no joke, it can enable someone else to do quite a bit of damage. It's uh, kind of cool like that. He's ultimately more useful that way than he is as just a straightforward AoE DPS. But yeah, I think it's pretty likely that I'll, I'll Grail Black Bart at least once. I think that's pretty... pretty uh, like it might take a while. Because it, it probably wouldn't take a while if it wasn't for... 120, but because of 120, it's going to be a while. Because right now, I'm thinking it's going to be Ku to 120, Tesla to 100, Percival to 90, and, and then I'm not sure. Then I might start grailing things like Leonidas and George and Blackheart and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, right now, it's no question right now, it's Ku to 120 and then Tesla to, to 100. That's... Uh, I, I might actually take Tesla to 120. I tell you what, if I knew that they were going to add story replay, like in a year... I would start working to get Tesla to 120. I would love to make a Zeus video where where Tesla takes out Zeus and Tesla's 120 and, and all that. That would be awesome. Uh, I think it's like a, an animation update before that happens, right? But uh, yeah, th these are pipe dreams. They shouldn't be, but they are. Tesla is just not nearly popular enough, so I just I don't see him getting an animation update anytime soon. Thankfully, his gameplay is strong enough that he does well on anyway. But it would be really nice if he could get an animation update. 
I, Tesla is, is a unit that has just grown on me so much. I, I, I just wish he got used more seriously, because when he is used seriously, he's awesome. Like, the stuff he says in Scatty's interlude and stuff, and then, like, his bio and his character material. I, I just think he is so fucking awesome, dude. He is, like, so high in my list. I mean, look how, look how much he went up on my sorter list, right? He's so high in my sorter list now. Yeah, Nasu liking him is, like, the only chance he has of anything cool ever happening. But I don't think Nasu, like, super likes him. He just likes him, uh, somewhat. Yeah, Tesla is bet more characterized in Scaddy's interlude than he is in his own. Feels kind of bad, man. I hate when you have good characters that are just a meme over and over again. It really bothers me. Like, well, you know, if you want to do silly things in events, that's fine. But there's a lot of characters that have interesting characters and then they never use them. Like, be it in an event or otherwise, they just don't use it and it, it's a complete waste. I might look weird, but I'm trying to get MP gain on, uh... Kojiro here. Thankfully, Scatty's interlude is not just an ice cream joke, but I- Dude! Scatty is such a good example, though, of, like, just the writers not communicating with each other. She has such a serious character, like, in terms of, like, what- Because you summon Scatty from the Log Spell. You know, like, God Juno, you don't, and Ivan, you don't, and stuff like that. But Scatty is literally the Scatty that was in Lost Belt 2, right? And she has, like, major problems because all the people that she ruled over and was responsible for are dead and everything, right? It, it's, it's a mess. And so, like, her My Room lines are pretty depressing and, and there's a lot of, like, there's, but there's a lot of potential for, like, a real character arc there. There's a lot of potential for a real character arc there. And then she'll go from, like, that really serious thing to LOL ICE CREAM, right? And it, it, it's stupid. Oh my god, it's stupid. But thankfully her uh, interlude isn't just ice cream memes. Uh, like the one with- I don't remember if she has more than one interlude. I think she only has one with the one that, got, that it's Tesla in it a bit. But, um... It, it, it's, it's fine. But yeah, that- it- Scatty has so much- If- I think out of all the characters that- because some, I think a lot of times they say, well, these characters have already had their main, like, character arc in their Lost Belt, and so that's that. But if there was ever a character that's, like, just begging for more character development and going on beyond what happened in their Lost Belt, I think it's Scatty. And if they don't do, like, more, like, obviously they have, like, you know, voice lines and stuff, like, that allude to it, but they're, I don't think they're ever going to really do, like, a character arc there and, like, have an event or something really flush it out, but I think they should. I think it's a, a huge waste to, to not do that. I have, what, Vinch and Oberim and Morgan and MP4. I don't have any healer or good main damage a rider. Uh, I'm good for most quests, but I'm bad with boss fights as I die very quick, especially with Caster. Should I roll for Merlin or Kama? Well, I mean, is Merlin going to be a... Uh, I don't know if you're an NA or JP, so it's like you don't... You can't just snap your fingers and roll on Merlin, right? Now, if you have the opportunity to get Merlin, Merlin is great because he's so helpful for boss fights. There is just, like, no better support for carrying your dumb ass through a, a, a boss fight than Merlin. Um, but, yeah, it kind of depends if he's ever going to be available anytime soon or not. Uh, the thing is, having Vinch and Oberyn doesn't lower your need for Merlin, I would say. No, I read it. What? Chet, what is wrong with you? Y'all, you're making fun of me here. You all sound really fucking stupid right now. Like, wow, guys, having Vinch and Oberyn means you just, you would never need Merlin. Oh, no, because, it, you know, Merlin is just doesn't do anything. It's not like, it's not like Oberyn and Vinch are complete burst supports. And Merlin is the complete opposite of that. Like, like. Uh, chat, do I look like a whale to you that's like that, that can only think of like meta stuff like 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 really like oh wow I've got Vinch and and and, and uh, over him therefore I would never need Merlin like that is so small brain that is so fucking small brain that has no bearing on if you should roll for Merlin or not 
Because the reason you use Merlin is because he's not a burst support and he gives you the best longevity in the entire game. So it's like, do you need the best longevity in the entire game? Yes or no? That's what dictates if you roll for Merlin or not. Not if you have other buster supports. That is the most small brain thing of like all time. Jesus Christ. Anyway, but yeah, you don't really have the option to roll on, on, on Merlin or not. But if you, if you ever want something to make boss fights easier, I think Merlin is like the best thing that, that you can summon. But in the meantime, if you're wanting to like enable Morgan and not have Morgan melt, then your, your best options are David, Hans, and then Taunts. Taunts with Berserkers are really good, right? E even if you do have strong supports to beef up the, the Berserker, Taunts are like your best friend. So Leonidas, George, Mash, th those things are a huge help. I, like investing into a, 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 like a 10, 10, 10 Mash is something that can really help you out. Also, uh, um, uh, Chin Gong, because Chin Gong's a buster support anyway, and then he'll also give you damage cut and defense up, and he also gives you taunt again, so you can keep the pressure off the Berserker and stuff like that. Okay, what are we doing here? Wait, what, what are you talking about, Arjuna? I think I missed what you said prior. Like, are we talking about Shakespeare? I don't think Shakespeare would really be worth leveling if you have Oberim and Vinch. Because, like, you've got enough battery already, and you have enough damage already. Oh, fuck. Uh, I, I, I just NP'd, and there's another wave. Well, that wasn't ideal. Anyway, uh, yeah, what you want is, like, survivability for Morgan, right? The Chin Gong is is definitely one of the most useful things for for budget accounts, and he's useful even for non-budget accounts. So he's one of the more helpful budget units out there, I would say. Oh, hey, look, I can art chain. Kind of weird bonking an enemy with a giant ass avatar sword and having it do zero damage, but uh, you know, nightingale things. In Lost Salt 5, the most boss fights are AoE, so Taunt won't do any good. Nope, that's bullshit. Dude, that, that's so bull- not only is that bullshit, I was watching a streamer that was having uh, a really hard time and the streamer was thinking about using a taunt and his entire chat was like, nope, there's no point in using taunt here because the boss is AoE and taunt doesn't do anything. And the funny thing is the whole problem that he was having would have been fixed by taunt because when an AoE boss kills a taunt wall, they can't attack anymore. So like Fluffy, guys, if you haven't noticed, Fluffy does a little bit of damage. Um, and if Fluffy attacks three times, he, he sunders the earth. Um, and when you have a taunt show up and die, he doesn't attack anymore. That is one of the overwhelmingly most useful things you can do against Fluffy. And I'm actually so pissed at myself that the video that I made for Fluffy took advantage of that with, with St. George. Me using St. George is, is what really worked there against Fluffy at the end. But that was the very first time I ever used St. George against Fluffy. And I, I, I will ne I, I kick myself to no end that I didn't just reset the fight and do it better. Because like I used a command spell, but I didn't even need it. And I, it's everyone. I've seen a million people on you know Discord or Reddit or whatever you know bring up that I use a command spell there. But I literally didn't even need it, which one should be obvious. But I could have just reset and optimized the team and then not used it. Because not only could I have brought in the command codes to like get rid of the the, the debuffs and stuff, and I just, I just didn't bother to equip them. Uh, so not only would that helped, but I could have done a few things with George to make him a little bit better. There was just a little, op there was a lot of optimizations throughout the team that I could have done. 
But yeah, George is so, and so is Ben K. Ben K can show up and instantly die and cancel Fluffy's turn. Like that is so helpful at the end to finish off Fluffy. And same for Morgan. Uh, you can stop Morgan from yeeting your face because she killed a taunt and stuff like that. Taunts are incredibly good uh, uh, throughout all law spells. Law spell five, six, everything. Just because a boss is AOE, it does not make uh, taunts bad. Um, I'm trying, the only time I can think of where taunts are bad is when, uh, it's like if the boss does buff removal in a way that's like before their AoE damage and then it just doesn't do anything. But that's not a thing in Lost Belt 5 or 6. Um, but you know, taunts are amazing in, in, in 5 and 6. And those are the two hardest Lost Belts. Well, I guess it's 3, 5, and 6. But it, taunts are great in 3 too. Like, taunts are super good in Lost Belt 5, Lost Belt uh, 6, and Lost Belt uh, 3. Like, they're super good. Like, I actually can't really think of a fight where taunts aren't good. I, I guess maybe uh, Aphrodite, because Aphrodite is not like Fluffy, where, you know, Fluffy is just throwing out this devastating amount of, of damage. Aphrodite doesn't do that. Uh, so having her turn get cancelled and stuff from a taunt dying is not really that good. And the way the Aphrodite fight works, you're more worried about the debuffs than you are about, uh, like, cancelling her turn like that. So it doesn't make any sense against Aphrodite. But it can be good uh, against Demeter, because again, it'll, it'll still cancel her turn and slow down the damage on everyone else. Although her, da her damage is kind of high, so it kind of matters there. You can definitely take advantage of taunts there. Like, I've, see I've seen people murder uh, Demeter with St. George setups, where George does some damage, and then him dying with taunt can, can save the other units and things like that. Uh, and then he can even do the team uh, invulnerability shtick. So he's good there. Um, and taunts are good against Zeus, because uh, although Zeus is in P is AoE, his normal attacks are single target. Uh, and then in Lost Belt 5-1, you know, you've got, uh, like, uh, Charlotte. And Charlotte's a very single targety and whatnot. So yeah, taunts are, taunts are, are very good investment. They're, for some of the hardest fights that have ever been, taunts are some of the best ways of dealing with it. And especially in Lost Belt 5 and 6. And, and 3, I would say. They really are good in 3, because not only has 3 got hard content in it, but the, the boss fight, everything about the boss fights in Lost Belt 3 is just like begging for taunts because of like Lee, you know, Lee has insta-death, right? So if you, you can, you know, taunt that, it's very helpful. Now that being said, if I was gonna give someone advice uh, as to like what to level up for Lost Belt 5 and Lost Belt 6, the, the, my first thing is not necessarily gonna be a taunt. Now it's good to have a taunt, but, you know, I'm going to be thinking of, like, for Demeter, I'm thinking Ushi, Ricky, Alex, right, that kind of stuff. For uh, Zeus, I'm thinking uh, uh, Asclepius, stuff like that. Uh, Fluffy, everything, you know, everything. Although, I actually taunts, I really do think taunts are good for Fluffy. Like, I, the taunts are very good for Fluffy. Um, but As Asclepius is definitely one of the highest picks for uh, leveling shit to get through 5 and 6. Especially six. Well, even five, though, because of uh, Aphrodite and stuff. But I, I've just seen that so much for people like, oh, this boss is AoE, taunts are useless, and uh, it's just nonsense. Because not all, there's just so, like, there's so much more to this game than just that, right? Because, for example, the boss might be AoE, but they might have single target uh, debuffs. And then having taunt to know where the debuffs goes matters. And obviously when the taunt dies, they, they stop attacking. That can be really relevant, right? There's just... Uh, now, there are some bosses that taunt is bad. I will say, it's not like every boss in the game taunt is good. There, there have unquestionably been some boss fights out there where taunt is just such a pointless... Uh, you know, endeavor, right? It's not going anywhere. But I, I would say for more boss fights than not, I would say Taunt is one of the better options out there for budget. I mean, I, I think the proof's in the pudding. I use it all the time. Why do you think the, the Japanese low star guy does uh, poster girl constantly? It's like it's good or something. How much damage can we do? Does uh, Asclepius need to be 10 10 10 for Fluffy? It's a good idea, but he doesn't necessarily have to be. Because um, it kind of depends. In some setups, uh, not just the way I do it, but I've seen other people the way they do it with Asclepius. Sometimes you, you want Asclepius to use some of his stuff twice. You can, uh, on a good enough team, you can also rip Kojiro. But on a good enough uh, setup with, you know, Castor Toria, with the survivability and everything, you can potentially use 
you can just barely use Asclepius' skills twice, but that will only happen if he's 10-10-10. If he's 999, it's probably not going to happen, because you're pushing it at 10-10-10. Uh, but sometimes you're not going to use Asclepius in a way. You're like, yeah, I'm going to use his stuff once, and that's it. There's no way he's ever casting his skills again anyway, so it doesn't really matter if he's 10-10-10 or not. So it depends on the team. It's a good idea to have him 10-10-10, though, because he's such a good support universally. Regardless which way you fight Fluffy, you're, it's not bad to have a 10-10-10 Asclepius. And uh, I think for people that are going to struggle with Fluffy, the stronger your Asclepius, the better. Going back to the egg farm, well, I mean, you can get... If you're in A, you can get... Um, you, you can get eggs from the shop there, so that helps. And he doesn't use that many stuff. Uh, let's see here. Hmm. Who needs bond? Like, I'm thinking who needs, like, unlock interludes. So it's things that I'm definitely going to use on this account. Uh, a Raj, but he might already have it. Nah, he could use some more bond, okay. Well, I guess that guy had to be on JP because he had uh, Morgan, by the way, and that's uh, a bit of a hint there. I wonder how far he is in... Uh, some lost belt stuff. I tell you, I I think Morgan can be a real account carry because she is not like on par with Hijikata, Berserker Nobu, Beowulf even, Kualter for single target stuff, but she keeps up fine. And then she's also got really good AoE and then some support. So I, I think she's a really good account carry. Like, she just does a lot. Like, if you need the strongest... Fluffy. Let's use Fluffy as example, right? Because Fluffy is a hard fucking boss, right? There's not a lot of wiggle room to be an idiot there. Um, you're not going to want to use Morgan as your main DPS for Fluffy. The only way that would even be possible is if you just got, like, all the OP fucking support stuff ever, right? Um, and so Morgan would be a pretty bad DPS for, for Fluffy. But there's a lot of single target fights that are not, not as hard as Fluffy, and she'll still work. Yeah, God is another one. God is a pretty good universal carry as well. I think Morgan's better though. Like God Juna can be better than Morgan, uh, in, in like with the right team combos and depending on what you're doing and, and blah 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 blah. But for just general, you know, slap it on the team, you know, set it and forget it. I think Morgan is better because she's got the team support stuff as well, right? She gives the, the battery. Uh, I, overall, I think she is, is a better carry. Now, Gaojun is a really good carry too, though, right? Like, uh, it, it, it doesn't, like, they're both so good at carrying an account, it's kind of apples and oranges, but, like, uh, Morgan's battery and stuff, that's really nice. Like, that, that's really nice. But they both have some survivability, I mean, they both have guts, things like that. They're, they're both good account. Uh, and, I mean, no joke, there absolutely are times that Gaojun is going to be better. I would say Gaojun is He's better at being a single target DPS. I mean, am I, have I, you, chat, I know you guys, you know, cheese it up sometimes, right? Uh, I, I think a lot of people have seen the, the forbidden fruit that is Gajuna's normal card damage, right? He's like, I'm an AoE unit, drops a, a nuclear bomb with a, a, a normal card attack, right? It's like, it works pretty good uh, for, for single target damage right now. Morgan can too, but she really has to work a bit harder at it, especially you really got a crit and, and that kind of thing. Uh, I think Gajuna is definitely better as a stand-in single target uh, than Morgan is. But Morgan is better at just like the universal like uh, support stuff. Yeah, I, I, I did A setup. I did a few setups for that Nero fight, but I did A setup where I did uh, Gajuna as the Berserker. And I will say, it really wasn't, like, that Nero fight's not that good for Gajuna. Like, it, it, it was kind of awkward. He wasn't really better than, like, even Hijikata or something. 
but he still did. I mean, oh my god, like he had no problem. Because when it comes down to like the Berserker killing Nero, it wasn't a problem at all. He just instantly uh, yeeted him. But I actually think uh, Gajuna is inferior though to like Ku Alter and like some of those other big boy things for that Nero challenge quest. Not like in general, but for like that Nero challenge quest. Ku Alter is like god mode for that. But I actually really like Beowulf there. I thought uh, Beowulf worked pretty good. Because he had sure hit. And he had survivability. So he had like double guts. And you had uh, you had ability to break health bar. Like seriously, I, no, I'm telling you, Ku and Beowulf is really fucking good for that challenge quest, right? That that was very smooth. Uh I guess uh it's it's very efficient. Yeah, imagine if you buff up Gajuna, you can kind of ignore the gimmick there and kind of just brute force it. That's act I didn't do it that way because I was using like all everything else on the team was like really budgety. But yeah, I imagine you can brute force it like that and just kind of laugh at it. There's actually there are a good number of boss fights out there that Ku Alter is not good for. There's a lot more than you would think. Like. He's good from some so some very obnoxious boss fights, but man, there are a lot of challenge quests where Ku Alter is useless. I'm not a lot of challenge quests where he's useless. The thing is, you don't normally even think to use him in those fights, though, because uh, they're normally like it's just a, it's an archer, so you use a lancer, right? Like it's really obvious what class you should be using. It's not like you're fighting a ruler or multi classes and stuff. But like Ku Alter against Fluffy, that's terrible. Like that that's terrible. Uh, and I, there's there's quite a few fights out there like that where Kualter is like what he does is just not what you want in the slightest. But the reverse is also true where there's a lot of challenge quests that are normally annoying as fuck and you have to like like super respect the gimmicks in the fight and everything. And then Kualter allows you to do it in a way where you don't have to respect the gimmicks in the fight in the slightest and you can just laugh at them, right? So I mean Kualter is very good and and quite often. I'd say Gilfest is actually where Ku Alter probably shines the most. I think he's been applicable in most of the boss fights, and it, it's just Gilfest is really hard. So I think uh, I think it's it's probably the, the best time for him because it, it doesn't really have a fight that shuts down good normal card damage, and it's because you have an event CE. Generally, when you have event CEs, um, and here's why they want to make sure. Uh, a three star that does an NP with the event CE is enough damage to at least meet like a damage check like for breaking Queen of Sheba's health bar when you've got a decent amount of paywalls off they want to make sure Ushi with the event CE can break and because of that that means the damage thresholds if Ku Alter is all like I see red cards and he has the damage CE he's basically doing that damage Ushi just did so he doesn't need his NP right but there are a lot of challenge quests and main story fights out there that are not balanced like that because they're not balanced around like an event CE and stuff like that. And uh, Uga Booga doesn't work so well, right? And it's the same for Hercules. There's just some fights out there where Hercules doesn't work very well because he's more about C red press red, right? So there are boss fights where that kind of shit just, it, it don't fly, right? But um, there, Gilfest doesn't really have any fights like that. So uh, Shoe Alter is pretty much awesome for all of them and there's a lot of a lot of multi-boss fights in guild fest and multi-boss fights mean individual hp is lower so you can just shred them right their hp like a lot of the harder boss fights in guild fest the enemy health is not that high right and then you have an event ce and uh berserkers don't care about multi-class stuff so you know like, like the nero one right you got three different classes but each of their health bar is like 100 to 200k or 300k like pfft. Like, with an event CE uh, on a 5-star Berserker, that is nothing, right? That's absolutely nothing. But yeah, I can't imagine anyone using Ku Alter to beat Fluffy. It's probably possible if you bust out Merlin and, you know, all that shit. But, uh... Let's see, what am I doing here? Uh, someone's gonna fucking die. Anyway, yeah, if you had, like, you know, the story support Castoria, Merlin, Waver, er, you know, every OP thing ever, you could probably make Ku Alter work there, but there's no benefit to it. Like, you're not going to be doing more damage than, like, anything else you could take. I mean, he's got, he's got good survivability, but it's not, you know, it's not the best in the game by any means, and he's not the best damage in the game, so the trade-off's not worth it. Uh, 
I don't know why I'm bothering to MP, but I'm hoping I can target switch and do the extra attack, so. Q Alter though is not the only OP support you can summon though for Guildfest. There are other things that will work too, and I know because I've done it, um, but Q Alter is a very safe one. But there are other options. The thing is, Ku Ultra is so famous for being good for Guildfest, so it's very easy to find someone that slotted him. So if you can make a setup based around him, it's one of the more practical practical things you can do. So it's the sensible, and that's what Ace of Hearts does. He tries to make practical budget setups. It's not about it's not about doing it with the most minimalist thing possible. It's about doing it with what makes like the most sense, right? And what people can achieve. Fluffy is, I don't, we'll see, right? Because I didn't really fight Achilles a lot back in the day. Nobody, I'll say this, nobody beat uh, Achilles with an even remotely budget setup uh, in, in Guildfest, where people have absolutely beaten Fluffy with budget setups. Now, they're not as budget as normal, right? Um, you know, like I used a Grailed coup and I used Percival, though Percival could have been replaced with, with Fuma, but it would have been more RNG. Uh, and my grill coup could be replaced with a 70 coup if you have his third skill. The thing, or his third passive, excuse me, which I did not have, but there was no way for me to get it. And there's no way for most people to get it. That's the thing, at that point, anyway. Um, but there, there have not been, like, super, super budget clears of Fluffy. There haven't been. They're, they're, they're normally reliant on, uh, you know, very rare craft essences or the, the new passive system or, or both or anything. It's not the most budget thing ever, right? But it's kind of budgeting. Where there's just... Last I checked with Achilles, there wasn't anything budget at all. Uh, but we'll see. There, there's more people kind of... Because JP didn't have much time. Like, I didn't even try, right? I was too busy with work and doing other video games at the time. And I just didn't... I, I, I just could not be bothered to... Uh, I don't think I was sick back then, but I, I don't remember. I think that's when that whole shit started. But anyway, um, I, I didn't bother with Achilles too much. I just beat him, and I, I, I kind of cheesed it, and I didn't, I didn't really look back. Um, but no one else really did it back then either. But we've had two years now. A lot of people have theory crafted that whole time. And they're like, oh, they, because, they, for example, if I, I didn't try, but let's say I did try, right? Because this has happened to me before, where I'm trying a really hard boss to try to keep it more budgety. Um, and I'll be like, you know what, if I had leveled this and this and their skills were 10, 10, 10, I bet you I could do it, but I can't level those right now. Well, so, you know, too bad. Um, and that could happen with Achilles. You could be on Achilles like, fuck, if I had leveled this thing and that thing and their skills were maxed out and I got a little lucky, this might actually work, but I can't even try it because I don't have those things leveled and I can't level them right now. I don't have the skill gems or whatever, or I don't have, I don't have the void dust or I don't have the, the QP or, you know, whatever the fuck. Um... But that's not going to be an issue for the NA people because the people that are, are like like Ace of Hearts and the other people out there that are wanting to do the low star stuff, they've had two years to theory craft and make sure they leveled up what they needed to level up. Um, so they'll, they'll they'll have a better chance if some uh, NA is a lot more likely to pull off a good budget setup for Achilles than JP was. Right? The thing is that's true for Fluffy as well. So the the, the Fluffy situation was the same. For JP. Now, it's not the same, I guess, moving forward, because people can always do Fluffy if they make a new account or whatever, so people could still figure stuff out if things go on. But everyone that did it when it first came out, they were all in the same boat where if they didn't really have something ready, this... Like me, I was like, I know I could do this with an even more budget setup if I had Ku's third passive. But there, it was impossible for me to get Ku's third passive for a long time. I still don't have it because I don't want to roll, right? So I, I'm like, yeah, I probably can't do that for months. So I, And I can't revisit the fight, so I, you know, I'm shit out of luck. Uh, where, like, people moving forward, they'll be more likely to be able to get that kind of stuff, right? But what I'm getting at is, for the initial fluffy attempts, people were in the same boat as they were for Achilles Gilfest, and people were able to do kind of budgety setups for fluffy, right? So, but, and they were not for Achilles. So that, that makes, for, in my opinion, I think Achilles is going to be harder. However, I really stand by this, because I know how the fight works for Achilles. I think Achilles is easier if you're going ham. Because what you need to do is very obtainable and pretty easily if you're using all the OP supports. 
right? If you have access to OP supports and a very strong DPS, like maybe you summon Kualter, you have Merlin, or you have Kualter and you summon Merlin, you know, whatever, whichever way it goes, shit like that, uh, you know, or big crit stuff with Hijikata, because, uh, like, Hijikata, I think, is one of the better ways to kill Achilles, right? Or you, there's, you know, quick crit stuff you can do with Scatty and stuff. If you're able to do that kind of gameplay, I don't think Achilles is that bad, because it's basically just live longer, because, okay, this is why Achilles is so bullshit for budget, because you cannot kill Achilles very quickly. It, it, as, far, as far as I'm aware, it's just not doable, right? You, on, on a pure budget setup, you are not killing Achilles super quickly. And because of that, you have to put up with his DPS, which is insane, right? And he can also NP very often, depending on how you do with the gimmick and stuff. And you, there's no way for a budget team to balance out the survivability and the damage like that. Where more whale setups or just stronger setups can. And they can they can just kill Achilles quickly, right? Like a Hijikata setup can kill Achilles very quickly. And then you don't need to bring the survivability stuff. You don't need a David, you don't need Merlin's thing, you don't you know, you don't the gut CE is about all you're gonna need, right? If you can kill him very quickly, right? That's a big part of why whale setups are normally so much easier. It's because they are capable of killing the boss much faster, which means you don't need to bring survivability. Budget setups normally cannot kill it that fast, and so they have to bring survivability. And that makes, that just, that limits your options. Like, well, if I have to bring survivability, that means I can't bring this, this, and this, right? And it, it just makes things, it's a cascade effect of making the game a lot fucking harder, right? And uh, so I think Achilles is very disproportionately difficult for budget. Where he is hard, for non-budget, but I don't think it's that hard. I, I don't think it is at all. I think Fluffy is harder to figure out than Achilles, right? Because ultimately, super whale, like, or just really strong setups, right? Things that have very strong supports, very strong DPS, right? Lots of five stars, a lot of, a lot of good shit. Uh, the, both, the, the, if you're in that situation where your account is that strong, you, you absolutely can beat both Fluffy and Achilles. You're completely capable of beating both of them. But figuring out what you need to do and put what where, when, uh, it, I think it's harder to figure out for Fluffy than it is for Achilles. I think Achilles is pretty fucking straightforward. And it, you can do, uh, if you look at some of like the really whale setups that beat Achilles, like the videos out there and stuff, they're pretty tried and true style of setups. It's not really anything too uh, unique, right? Where, where Fluffy is just a lot harder to figure out what you need to do, right? There's a lot more uh, puzzling it. So I actually think for whales, potentially Fluffy is one of the hardest fights in the game. Uh, or just for really, really strong accounts. Uh, but for budget, I think it's absolutely Achilles. Uh, I, we'll see. I might be wrong. Uh, 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 we'll, we'll see what, like, you know, the people out there do. And if I have, I, I, I'll probably mess around with it. I think I'm curious enough that even though uh, Tales of Arise is out and the JP event's going to be going, I'll, I'll probably set some time aside to, to just play around with it myself. I, I probably won't make a video because uh, I ain't got time for that. But I, I, I'll, I, I want to give it a real shake. You know what? Let me switch to NA real quick. Let me... Because I, I feel like my NA account, though, may be really unprepared. Because I'm not... That's, my, that's what I'm getting at. That's why I was kind of a, a annoyed at people bugging me nonstop to do Achilles stuff on NA. Because I I can't. Because I was just talking about that earlier, just a second ago. I was saying how, you know, if you want to give it a, a good shake, you're going to need all that budget stuff leveled. You need to make sure if you're like, oh, but what if I did this, this, and this? You need to already have that leveled. I don't play NA enough that I doubt... That I, I, I'm gonna look. I'm gonna jump on an A. And I want to see, but I I doubt I would actually have like that full roster of units that I, I'd be like, oh yeah, I'd want to try this. I'm gonna try this. I, I think Baldi is actually a, a, a possibility for for Achilles and stuff, but I, I don't think I have that. So for me to have like a really educated opinion on like you know how hard is Achilles for budget, I would need to to have all of that stuff ready to go, and I I don't think I do. But let me look. Let's see. What what are we looking at here? For budget. Okay, so obviously we got, uh, you know, coup, proto coup, that kind of stuff. We got better We got David. Uh, I, the thing is, I know for some skill ranks, some of these are pretty scuffed. Uh, what about, uh, what's Asclepius looking like? Uh, okay, that's a thing. I'm not sure Asclepius would necessarily be good there. I'm just going over my bases. Um, what about Baldi? Because I think if there ever, if there was ever a challenge quest for budget, that Baldi might be the guy. It's Achilles. I'm serious. I've used Baldi for so much stuff. Kairos used it for so much stuff. Baldi never accomplishes anything impre Im impressive in challenge quests on budget ever. Not once. I've never seen it. He always sucks. But if there was ever a goddamn challenge quest 
that he might be like the guy it was like oh shit somebody did it it's achilles it's the perfect fight for him because it normal card damage is rewarded having some degree of survivability is rewarded uh, the, the, the gimmick in the stage gives your DPS their entire deck and that's what fucks him over The thing is he doesn't have divinity, but that's okay because you, you can just break it with someone else You only need divinity for the first health bar and the first health bar is only like 200k and with an event CE That's nothing you can just have whoever break it and then cycle into Baldi like I'm telling you if I I would not be surprised if somebody pulls it off with something really budgety It's it, I think it, it might be Baldi now what I think you're gonna see and the thing is, I already know you can do this. You can summon Ku Alter and then make a budget setup work. That can work, right? But, you know, I I never made a video like that because I, that's not the kind of videos that I want to make. Especially for Ku Alter because I don't like Ku Alter. But, uh, you know, that's, I normally don't do that kind of stuff. But I know you can do that. You can obviously summon a Ku Alter and then use Chen Gong and, and uh, things like that. Uh, that's what I bet you Ace of Hearts is going to do. That's what he should do because that's what he does, right? And that's, that's useful to the player base. I bet you Ace of Hearts is going to... Summon a cool altar, use Chen Gong, things like that, and then uh, and just you know blow up. Uh, maybe Hijikata. I, he might. I might. Hijikata is very good in that fight, so maybe Hijikata. But I, I think something like that. But if somebody does one to three stars, right? No four or five stars on the team. I think it would be Baldi. I, I just can't think of another DPS that it would be. Maybe Ku just because of the survivability and he does have divinity. But um, l l let me let me think. What else? For, so no for one to three stars only one to three stars only um, Maybe Mori just because he absolutely has the normal card damage I just don't think he has the survivability and I don't see how that would work It'd be too the team would just have too much trouble Supporting him. oh fuck my NA account doesn't have Mori though ready to go. I think he is in p5 though. Yeah, he is in p5 uh, but That's what I'm talking about I, my NA account. I couldn't try everything that I'd want to try I don't even have Babbage leveled up for God's sakes not that I would use Babbage for uh uh, for Achilles. Yeah, I very much do think Achilles is beatable by like summoning Ku Alter and then using things like Chen Gong and, and, and the works like that. Like that I absolutely think is doable, but uh, for pure one to three stars, I, I don't. Uh, I don't. I'd be surprised. I really will be surprised if someone pulls it off. I hope they do. I hope someone does pull it off, but I, I'm not seeing a, a good way. I, I will give it a, a try on my account though. The bad thing is uh, the two things that I think are worth trying, I don't have leveled. Um... I wonder if I could level them, though. I'd have to farm a lot. Like, yeah, I'd, I'd have to get a lot of embers, and then I'm not sure I'd have the skill gems and stuff. But yeah, I think Baldi's worth trying. I think Mori's worth trying. I think Ku is worth trying. I don't know what you do about the survivability, though. That's the real problem. Like, the survivability is, is it's such an issue. Yeah, I know the screen's kind of zoomed in right now. It's because I'm using the emulator screen when I'm, I'm actually on decks, where I can just do that. What I did, I was smart and I moved. I moved my Samsung Dex window, so if I if I knew I was using the emulator window, it would look better. Where before it was like way higher on my screen. You know, Caligula actually maybe if you got really lucky. I mean, I I've seen Caligula pull off some crazy stuff when it's it's single uh, target. You know, normal card damage like is rewarded. I don't know, and you got Chen Gong. I I, I I would I legitimately I would not count out. Uh, Caligula. I might even give that a go, Cap. And the thing is, I feel like what you would need to do is you would need to have your own Caligula that's Grailed, and then you would need two Chin Gong. Oh, wait, no, you can't do two Chin Gongs, though. Fuck. Um, yeah, no, it's gonna be a problem. That, that's that's, that, that's gonna be a problem, because Chin Gong would be really good there. I don't know. I'll, I'll, tr I'll try to set some time aside, though, because I do want to mess about, around with it, because if there is something that's way harder for budget than Fluffy, it's definitely Achilles. Um, and maybe Clown Boy. That Clown Boy gets overshadowed because Achilles was so bullshit. But I think Clown Boy was really bullshit for uh, Low Stars 2. I'm not sure he was as bullshit as Fluffy, but I think it might be. They might be about the same. But um, I would say Knights of the Round Table, Achilles, and, and Myth, Clown Boy, are the, are the challenge quests that come to mind that are, are probably harder than Fluffy, or at least budget. Um, let me see though. There's some other nasty ones out there. I think Summer 3 is up there, but I don't think it's quite as bad as Fluffy. Definitely not, but it's up there. Let's see. What are other... Ch chat, throw throw some challenge quests at me here. What some really hard ones. Um, let's see. There, the Gilius one. Uh, yeah, that's, I, I said the Knights of the Round Table one. We got that one. Um, yeah, King of Son is up there. I don't think... Uh, it depends. I mean, he's a... I don't think he's quite as bad as Fluff. It's close. That's really close. 
Um, like they're they're really close to each other there. Uh, but may, maybe King of Song might be a bit harder than Fluffy for for budget, uh, especially the first time we fought him. The second time we fought him, probably not. But the first time we fought him, I would say I would say so. That's that, that's close though. Um, but I think the Gilius one from 4.5. The imaginary scramble, I, that one's up there. Uh, I don't think it's quite as bad as Fluffy, but that's close. Uh, no, not the Taiga one. I, I don't think the Taiga one is. Well, I don't know. The t uh, for budget, the, it's simpler. I don't know. Actually, yeah, the Taiga one is actually up there, I would say. Um, you can do it, though, with, like, Ku, uh, not Ku, uh, um, Valkyrie as your main DPS and Fergus as your cleanup. That works. Like, I know that works. Um, and that's pretty on par with what you see from Fluffy. Because although there are setups for Fluffy that don't technically use four or five stars, I mean, they're using complete bullshit craft essences. They've got the, you know, the passives that most people couldn't possibly have and stuff like that. So I think that does, I, I would say, I would say Taiga and Fluffy are pretty close to each other then. Because with Fergus's cleanup and Valkyrie's main DPS, I think that's, in terms of overall rarity on, and difficulty for the team, I think that's pretty on par with what we see from Fluffy. So Taiga's close. I'd say Taiga is close. Um, I kind of forgot about that one. No, the Odysseus one's not hard. Um, I, I don't think it's hard at all. I think it's actually quite easy. I mean, it takes a second to figure out, right? When you first go into it, you can get blindsided by it, absolutely. Um, but it, it's not. That's not. That's not in the. That's not a big boy one. There, chat. Surely, there's some other big boy challenge quests that we're we're not thinking of because there's been some nasty stuff over the years. Um, not Bull of Heaven. Uh, Bull of Heaven is, is tough, but he's no fluffy. Jesus Christ, he's no fluffy. You can, you can beat Bull of Heaven with just, you know, Deer Mid to kill Ishtar, Ku to kill Ishtar, anything like that. And then you can just do all the budget support. I mean, 100 Face is just so busted for Bull of Heaven that that makes it um, so much more reasonable. You can absolutely do Bull, Bull of Heaven with just full 1 to 3 star stuff. Nothing too fancy. No, not the Salt. Salter one's easy. It's just boring. I, uh, it's it's like there's already a bunch of super budgety setups for the Saber Alter one. It's just the reason I never made a video is because it's so fucking boring. It, and also, dude, I'm so pissed because to this day I get shit for that. People are like, oh, Green didn't do it, but all these other people did. But the, back first off, it's boring as sin. It takes like 50 fucking turns to do it for budget. But back then, I had I had to record stuff through Mobazin. Uh, I didn't have like OBS and stuff back then. And I, uh, it was very difficult for me to record videos that were more than like 20 minutes. It was, a, it was a real problem. I didn't have, my phone didn't have a, enough hard drive space. Uh, so I, 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 and like not only would the recording get like split up, but it gets split up, uh, I wouldn't have control over it. So I, uh, basically wherever it would have to split up the video file, it would happen randomly and I'd have no idea when it would happen. So it could be in the middle of like why I'm selecting cards and it looked like I would save scum. Uh, and also, a lot of times my phone would literally run out of hard drive space, so I'd have to stop recording completely, exit F, go, hook up my phone to my computer, uh, take the video files off the phone, right, uh, and then hook everything back up and then, go, and then continue the boss fight. But if that attempt wasn't a successful one, like I need to change the team, it was all for nothing. So I just, I don't know, back then I just wouldn't do bosses like that. Uh, but anyway, basically what you would do to do um, Saber Alter on a full budget setup is you would do Double David, and then the other four units were all casters. Like Ku Alter, Babbage, stuff like that. Because uh, casters had taunt, essentially. With, where Saber Alter would always attack the caster. So uh, the, the David shield would not get pinged off because Saber Alter would just be attacking the casters. And then you would pick tanky casters like Ku, uh, Caster Ku. Right, because Caster Ku has P PFA. Uh, and then Babbage has the same vulnerability. You, you'd pick, and then uh, you can do a VC Brawn at the end, stuff like that. Um, and so every time uh, Salter would NP, you would block it with, it, you'd still have David's Evade. And then when you cast David Evade, it would still help the caster unit to face tank the normal card damage. So every MP, David would be able to survive no problem. And then you would just slowly wear down, you know, Saber Alter with a double David. I mean, and there's, there's literally multiple videos of people doing it out there. And, you know, I was aware of that possibility from the very beginning, but I never made a video for it because I had no desire to, to do back. Even now, I don't have the desire to do that when I can record it easier. But back then, it was just so fucking difficult for me to record. Not only was it really hard for me to record long videos like that, um, it, you know, I, like I said, it'd be choppy, right? Like the video would cut out at random times, and I wouldn't even know where it would cut out, and it would look like I was save scumming and everything. So I just I didn't want to deal with it. Um, but even now, I mean, it's just so boring. Like honestly, Saber Alter is easy to do on a budget setup. It's just really boring. 
Like, I, I don't like that challenge quest because it's not... If you do a non-budget setup, it's really easy to do very quickly and it's just... It's not a hard boss fight. And then you can totally do it on a budget setup. It's just the longest, boringest thing ever. And it, it's just so frustrating. That's something that's really, like, irked me over the years because that that's the, that's the challenge quest that's been available to the player base more than any other boss fight uh, or challenge quest. And I, I never made a video for it. And people have always been like, oh, he's green's avoiding it. But I'm like, no, I'm just avoiding it because it's so fucking boring with with uh, budget setups. Like, it, of course it is. Like, the, it's not, it's just not that hard. And, uh, but yeah, I don't want to take like 60 turns. Because like, I think Ace of Hearts, I think did the double David thing. I think he did. I might be wrong about that. But I think he did the double David thing and it took like 60 fucking, I know a few people did the double David thing and it just took fucking forever. Um... Because it's, it's, honestly, the, the casters having taunt there is actually very helpful to, to the player. The thing is, Kama isn't the same thing as Fluffy, because you, you can beat Kama without max gauge, um, and get all the rewards. Because that's the thing, you, to get Achilles' loot, to, to, to get that, that fat loot, you must win, right? You, there's no, you, to get, you have to win. To get past Fluffy, you have to win, right? For Kama to get the lore and, and to proceed with the event and everything, you just have to beat it on any difficulty setting. So it's just not the same thing, right? It is true though, Kama at max gauge is n that's not budget friendly at all. I don't I don't think there are any budget setups for max gauge Kama. That's just that's not a thing in the slightest. You can do half gauge, right? Half gauge is not so bad. I mean, fuck, you can solo half gauge. But, um, yeah, I d unless I'm mistaken, I don't think there are any max gauge budget setups for Kama. But I, I don't consider that the same thing, like I said, because that's an optional fight where what you need to do to actually beat her... Because you're beating her all the same, no matter what her gauge is at, and you get the loot, and you get the lore, and you move on with the story and everything, so... Uh, I don't really put that on the... Because uh, they feel freer to make some bullshit OP fight like that when they know it's optional like that, right? Where they know Fluffy's not optional and stuff like that. And even though Achilles in a way is optional, it's not, to get his loot, you still have to beat him. So he's still not, they're not gonna make him as hard as that. Although I tell you what, Achilles really is up there. Uh, Achilles is really pushing it on. Like, I don't think they intended Achilles to be that hard, by the way. I really don't. Uh, it just doesn't make sense. He's not the, he's not the finale. And he's just so much harder than the other fights. Like Tyga's hard, right? Tyga's hard. Uh, uh, MHX can be hard, uh, uh, the Nero one can be hard, like, absolutely, but they're, they're just, they're not even close to, to Achilles, but, uh, we'll see, I haven't fought in a long time, maybe my, my opinion's gonna change. Max Kiara's not hard either, Max Kiara's, an, Max Kiara's, like, uh, she's a lot like Saber Alter, it's just boring, it's really fucking boring. That's another one I never made a video for, but it's just because I, I, why, I have no idea why people, uh, they don't really ask me anymore, but I remember back in the day, people used to ask me all the time to make a Max Kiara one, and I, ha I, I have never, it has never been easier for me to ignore them, because it's not hard, and it is, especially for budget, it is so boring. It, it, it's so, it's like, we're talking 100, 200 turns. Why on earth would I want to make a video for that? And also back then, I was the same s situation as, as Saber Alter. But like, and there's, there was already a bunch of videos of it, right? I, I never get when people do that. It's like, I'm not, it's like, there's no way you're gonna ask pull some one to three star setup for Max Kiara that's not gonna involve stalling. That's just, you're not gonna do that, right? That's that's literally not going to happen. And, and, and it does not make a, a, a good video, right? Even if you do one to four star, it's gonna be unbelievably boring. I mean, normally we do one to five star, it's fucking boring. I honestly think Max Kiara is a really bad boss fight. People have this idea that it's super hard, but it's not. It's just, it's very boring. The gimmicks force you to play in a very stall-oriented way. It, it, it's just, and it, the thing is, the hardest Kiara fight, and the thing is, most people aren't good enough at the game to realize this, but the hardest Kiara fight is not the giant Kiara. It's the small Kiara. It's the small Kiara when she has all of her buffs, when you don't remove any of the buffs from, from her. That is, that is much harder than Giant Kiara. It is not even close. Like, it is so much harder. Because you can cheese Giant Kiara in a very simple and easy way. You really cannot do that with the Max Kiara. Dude, the, the Kiara with all of her buffs, like, little Kiara with all of her buffs, she fucking, you know, drains her NP every turn. She has so much resistance to everything. It, it is it is way harder than than the the supersized Kiara. And I'm not, I'm not sure they intended that, but uh, that is definitely the case. 
Okay, I think I'm gonna wrap up here because I am starving to death and I started streaming kind of late today. So tomorrow, I, I believe tomorrow is gonna be the summer event. And unless someone can correct me, am I, am I wrong about this? Cause you know, JP time is ahead of us by a day. So I, I'm pretty sure the stream for them is like super late tonight. Um, it, it might be, oh, so is it tomorrow night that it, that's the summer event? God damn it. Okay, well, if it's to I, I think it's tomorrow night then. So if that's the case, what we will do is tomorrow I'll probably just do a bonus stream. Uh, I, I, I want to play some Ninja Gaiden or some Hardcore Mecha or whatever. I really want to do that. Because it's like my last opportunity to do it, right? Because after that, it's going to be the summer event. And then we'll also um, uh, Tales of Arise and stuff like that. But yeah, one of these days, I might take a day off streaming so I can really sit down and, and mess around with Achilles. Just because I really do want to have a better opinion about... I already know it's bullshit, and I'm pretty sure- I feel like the only budget thing you can do is summon Kualter or Hichikata or something like that. But I do want to see what can you do with pure 1 to 3 stars. I want to see how it goes, and uh, I'm gonna give it a good shake. I may have to grind a fuckload though and like, uh, and get Mori up, because I, I want to be able to try everything I can think of, right? And, and with every Mystic Code and CE, right? And so I need to have Mori and Baldi up, because there's a chance- especially Baldi, I- uh, I might even- oh fuck, Cairo doesn't have a Grailed Baldi. God damn it, I was gonna say I might try a Grailed Baldi, uh, and I would summon uh, Kairos, but fucking Cairo didn't, uh, Grail Baldi on JP, because he's a coward. I fucking leveled coup, right, on, on NA and JP, but uh, Cairo didn't do it for Baldi, so. I have a Baldi? Okay, send me a, uh, send me a Discord DM if you can, and I can try to get, uh, yeah, uh, sadly, you're gonna need good command codes, but you put, put up whatever good command codes you got, right? And we'll just do our best, but, uh, I, I'd like to give that a try. I, I want to give Baldi a, a shake. It might not work out, but, uh, I, I, it might. You never know. I mean, if Baldi could somehow get counterclass damage, that would, uh, that, that would really help. But, I don't know. I, I remember what little I had done of it, uh, on JP two years ago. I remember just being like, lol, no. And again, I wasn't really playing FGO a lot during that period, right? I was doing other things. I was busy with work. I was playing other games with my friends and stuff. And so I remember, I remember articulating in just like two, like just like two attempts that I was like, yeah, I'm not going to bother making a budget video for this. Uh, so, you know, I, I, and I remember thinking, I wouldn't be, I remember thinking, I'm not sure the other budget people are going to do it either, but I don't know, maybe they do. But they didn't. As far as I'm aware, none of them did. So I was like, well, glad I didn't waste my time on that shit because, uh, I don't even remember why. I just remember there was something that strong armed you there with one to three stars that I was just like, this is utterly bullshit. And I think it was just maybe like the rate that Achilles impedes or something. Um, but I guess we'll see. Anyways, boys, let's see if we can raid somebody and then uh, we will be out of here. The good news is, chat, once you get past Achilles, you'll probably never have to fight him ever again. So, uh... Cause like, Fl I actually, of memory, I think Fluffy is probably a better, more reasonable boss fight than Achilles. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Alright, uh, Sharkwado is uh, streaming, so, and he raids us sometimes, so we'll raid him. His stream has grown so much, and that, that's good, so. It's nice to, it's actually really nice to see. It's really, it's been hard for people to, I think, grow in FGO sometimes. But, because uh, the, the, the player base is kind of stagnant. Cause they don't bring in new players to FGO very often because the new player experience is so bad. But um, anyway, all right, lads, I will see you later.